Hello, welcome. It's hard lore time. Did you just hit Whose a button? child was that? Uh, that's my cat. It's Metallic Cat. He's screaming right now. You hit a it's button. His, it's his birthday. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, Metallic Happy birthday, Metallic Cat. And he'll cry if he wants to. And happy oh, Halloween, you know? So true. Happy Halloween. Did you Recording? did you just try to hit a sample? I didn't hit. I was turning you up. Oh, okay. No sample. But it I looked mean, like he was trying to use, Okay, I that's can't. Good. You know? I figured you had ho- something Halloween-y queued up. You're you know, I was working right right until go time. I didn't. I was working today. Yeah, I guess you are technically off now. But I am off, yes. You were working today, but yeah. th- more importantly, <laughs> this, this guest we have. He says that to me every week, and it hurts, <laughs> hurts my feelings every week. More important than anything that you could possibly <laughs> say today is our guest today. <laughs> Who do we got? Mr. Ian Shelton is back. People have been coming in their pants to, for a full episode with this fella since the mini one went up. And now they can clean up. A Halloween miracle. <laughs> Ew, dude. A Halloween miracle. Yeah, it is Halloween day. Do you, are you dressing up? Yeah. Ian? No. I don't think I'm going to do anything. I, we just got to a... I don't know what state I'm in. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what's going on, frankly. Oh. And uh, there was talks of going to a haunted house tonight because we, we have really? an off day because it's a Monday. Where are you? A month. I don't know. You, do you want me to know. find out right now? I can look at a. So map. you just you're the you're really just the boss of this band, huh? You get to wake up and be like, "Take fetch, me, fetch me a hotel." <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, okay, let's see. I am in. I'm so. <sighs> Is the phone by you? Okay, I'm in North Carolina. Oh, oh, birthplace of Taylor Young. Wow, it, you know we can't get away from where Taylor Young was conceived, you really or, can't, man. or where he where was, was born. Where was he conceived? You're obsessed with Hattiesburg, conceived? Mississippi. Conceived? Oh. I've never asked because I'm not a fucking pervert. Okay, but. well, he offers that information up. He says this is this is where it all went down. I will never ever Dude, know check, the answer. To check that. this out on Valentine's. No, you will know the answer. Hey, wait, Colin, it's Hattiesburg. Mississippi. I can ask Teresa uh, where yours was. You as can well, fucking if like. suck my ass. <laughs> you keep Dude, talking. one time, one time on on Valentine's Day or around then, <laughs> I was when I was still living with at home. When I was in high school. Uh-huh. Th- my dad called and was like, "Hey, uh, can I talk to your mom?" Which is very strange. They don't. They never talked. Mm. And so I said, "Yeah." I thought I was in trouble. And I hear her go, "Uh huh. Yeah. No, it was yeah. It was right around then. Hmm. Okay. Bye." And I put it all together, and I realized I'm a I'm a Valentine's Day baby. My birthday is in mid November. It's nine months. You know what? I'm in mine is very special. Do you know why? Is it New Year's? No, September twenty first. What is nine months before that? Christmas. January. Christmas time. Oh, it is. I, it is Christmas. I am, I am a Christmas miracle, guys. Oh my! Can you wow. That? But more importantly. <laughs> Ian's life. So th- this actually brings me to my topic that I actually wanted to talk about on this episode. <laughs> Love right. it. We've never had that. I feel as though at least I'm owed an application uh, to be the fourth young brother. Oh, interesting. I, I feel I, you know I've done I've done probably the second most records at the pit. Yeah. I uh, you know I've lived at the pit. It's uh, true, and not paid rent, so it's kind of like similar to what you did it's in similar, high school. Similar to what I did in high <laughs> uh, school, yes. Um, so I, I just feel like I'm owed that, and I just kind of wanted to bring that to the public. And I and and I exposed the concept of Aaron Young to the people. You did, you did. You know, there might be a couple people ahead of you. There, I was going to say, there's got to be a long list. Nate, but, I mean, I'm not saying it. It should be exclusive to me, but uh, I'm just saying I'm owed an application. An okay. application, I see. I'll, 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 I'll write up a draft. And <laughs> Who we'll, else I'll, is on the list? I, I mean, Nate is on. Brody's on there. He's. Oh on yeah, has sure. to be. It's it's like Andrew it's, Morrissey. It's, and Andrew Morrissey. Andrew. See, that's Sabo probably. Pre- I don't know that person. I, that predates me when my involvement in the Young family. He. I see. He wasn't there for as long. He wasn't. No, you were there for longer, and I was. <laughs> I was there every day while you were there. <laughs> and I, cause I worked out there cause if he had this gym that if I didn't use would be covered in dust and rust. 
I used the Peloton for a while. You used the Peloton. You wouldn't work out with me. I asked you every day. I said, Ian, is today the day? <laughs> and it wasn't. It never it was the day. It never was. And then I ultimately stopped doing it because of you. Do you know that? Oh, you stopped coming because you were I sick of going. seeing me? No, not at all. <laughs> but I remember I was like, you know, I'm thinking about starting to go to a normal gym soon. Like, you know, it's like, I don't want to be going to my brother's house forever. And you're like, yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> And I never went again. <laughs> That's not true. I never went again. I don't think you said it like in a mean way. I don't think oh, you also, meant it. Also, I think this also goes towards my application. You know who else would give a very similar delivery to that? Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> See, but Taylor was the one who was like, no, like he. No, I I'm think just he, saying. I think he enjoyed had seeing his brother every day a little bit. The delivery wise, there. Yeah. Yes. You know. It was very, it was, he, you know, I think you guys rubbed off on each other. Similar, (laughs) similar levels. That's a whole different podcast, brother. That's a whole episode, maybe. We got to diagnose people. I want to, I want to talk about Halloween. You want to talk about Halloween? I don't care if this is coming out on the second or third or whatever. Oh, that's important. It's timely. It's poignant. I want to know what you guys did for Halloween. Ian, what are you currently doing for Halloween? I'm just, I'm doing this fucking podcast. That is best mm. case scenario. Mm. Yeah, That's this is all I really thing. wanted to do. So but I feel like most people did their Halloweenies either yesterday or yeah. Saturday. Yeah. I played shows every day for the past like week and a half. Did you guys and wear costumes ever? Yeah, did you dress up? No, I'm way You're too so serious boring. for that. Yeah, I'm a boring ass guy. Are you serious? I'm so boring. The last time I dressed up for Halloween was probably like eight years ago. <laughs> wow, dude. I mean, you love Kanye. You could be him. Or something. Wait. Well, yeah. I mean, I dress up as Kanye every day. <laughs> 2022 Kanye, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you got to uh, ask. Uh, you could go find like a, a, a Nazi memorabilia store. And find a, <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a Kanye 2022 costume. I was listening to the Ramones recently, and I remember hearing how um, Joey was obsessed with the Nazis. And I was like, this just would not fly at all. In the Hanneman. modern day, Joey and Hanneman and Lemmy and Le- oh yeah, Lemmy. Lemmy, Lemmy was like a legit collector. Let's there's dig like him a, up and cancel him. Let's get like him out of here. He's him. but he's European, you know. He's he is British. Yes, he's he was the, yeah, the was right got there. The right. He's Hanneman was like, just he, like they, they were killed cool. too by by the Nazis. Yeah. Dude, the were. crazy thing about Hanneman is at one point he had a guitar with labels printed. Of just notable Nazis, yeah. Like, like, yeah. like Jeff's Jeff's favorite Nazis. Yeah, on, like, like literally, literally on his guitar. So fucking insane. <laughs> With just, like bedazzled, like yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, like a book report. That's a mystery right there. It is. I, I mean, so, it isn't, no, but it's, it is. It's, it's out there. It's we're out not there. we're not breaking news here. No, no. Speaking of Nazis, uh, I really liked your Minions costume, uh, Kong. Oh, you are you, okay. You, you're okay. So you're of the conspiracy theory that. Yeah, I mean, I like, the Minions are just following orders. If you're thinking that, about that, it. I mean, well, there's, there's, what is the saying? It's a. Uh, you don't, you don't ask uh, a woman her age. Yeah. You don't um, ask a man his profession. Yeah, or how much he makes. How much he makes. You don't ask him in. Because he's where unemployed. They, where they were from 1940 to 1945. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, but mysteriously, thanks, the Minions right around then became unemployed and, and moved to America. And needed to find. And South then they America. found some guy with a familiar accent. And they were like, yeah. we yeah. got to work for him. I'm still yellow. Yeah, couldn't get it off, man. That's just jaundice. That's just severe alcoholism, brother. And before That's the what I have. <laughs> I have jaundice. I'm you not have jaundice. Me. I do. My eyes are yellow as hell. Holy shit. Really? I have from, something called Gilbert syndrome. It means nothing except for the fact that my eyes are yellow. Oh. Did you, in, was that self-inflicted or? No, I don't think so. So you could be born with alcoholism? I was born with it. Yeah, I had jaundice when I was a baby. So oh, wow. I was born a minion. So lucky. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah I, I, I actually wouldn't even have to do the paint if... Uh, if I did the costume. Yeah, you wouldn't need I had to use Dawn dish dish soap to get it off cuz cuz my wife remembered that that's what they use on like ducks to get Well, yeah, that off. also get the fleas off if What kind of paint those. did you fucking use? You like gnarly. I, I think it's just the amount. Ah. 
So it's like me trying to clean it off with my hand or a loofah turned the loofah into the paint. So I was just smearing mm. it. Like cream I, had, I, uh, I, for an Angel Dust music video, I, I had painted myself red and I was the devil. And red it is was, brutal. it was a bloodbath and in the, in the shower at the pit. <laughs> Let's talk about music. Videos. I literally had to come home in a trash bag. I wore two trash bags, top and bottom, to get into Audrey's car, and was transported as a piece of trash to to go and get wow. into the shower and get red on everything. On at the pit, at the place you at don't the pit, pay, yeah, yeah, the place I didn't pay. The place you pay yeah, I just fucked up the whole bathroom. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. That makes perfect sense. Let's talk about everyone music loved videos. it. How did that get started for you? Music videos, yeah. Uh, just. Same as with learning drums, it was a hole that was like, all right, no, no one else is gonna do this. We got to figure this shit out. Mm. So, I originally, I, I, uh, I really wanted to. Well, I still want to like write movies, mm. and I was like, oh wait, if you write a movie, you have to just like give it to some other guy to like fuck up or woman, and. uh Woman can fuck up movies. Good, good save, considering yeah. your, your partner. And uh, does yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I was like, oh, okay, I guess I should learn something about directing. But I've never done anything narrative because I know that it takes far more money to be good at that than sure like does. just some bullshit visuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, screenwriters who are screenwriters their entire lives, and like the the person that wrote like Silence of the Lambs or something has said that they had to fight and fight and fight to get something else made. And they were like, please just direct, just learn directing, stop writing. Well, and then it's also like, it, it has nothing to like, you can make one hit and then it just doesn't matter. No one cares at all. Or like, uh, I always think of like Charlie Kaufman. He wrote confessions of a dangerous mind. And I fucking love that movie. And he is like, it was ruined by the, by George Clooney directing it. And, Really? Got skull I didn't fucked. Know that. Yeah. He, he said like he made uh, a movie about an interesting guy just being about a guy who like gets his dick sucked. Fuck yeah. Which is not necessarily an unfair evaluation <laughs> of the movie, <laughs> but what can you do, man? What did uh were, were you already touring guy before getting into videos? Yeah, I uh I've been like touring since I was 17 and then I I think I was like probably 20 or 21 when I was like, oh, I should also get into this. My big thing is I've never thought that music would ever be sustainable in any sort of way. So I always was like, and then I should definitely get a backup plan somewhere in here. And like uh, worst case scenario, hopefully I could like direct commercials or something. Right. Smart. What was the first? Was was Bully the first? Oh, get band? the fuck out of here. Should we we have to that? talk. We played a gig. No. Together, dude. <laughs> we did. We played multiple gigs. Together. You played Mick World. You you were one of the. You're the only guest so far who can talk about Mick World with me. Yeah, and that show was cr the lineup was crazy. Yeah, it was it was uh, uh, nails record release, not on the flyer, uh, because it was some other band that I don't remember the name of. But then nails was last second put in to which place nails played. Uh, it was on Silent Death. Oh wow! And. No one cared at the right. time. Um, Even though, like, that record kind of did well right away. Like, but I, I just think it was, like, it was gnarly. the straight hardcore show. Like, it was yeah. rotting out headlining creatures, expires, like, first legit, like, yeah. hardcore show in California. We played with them the day before at a show that nobody attended in, the in like, Murrieta. Ugh. And then... Uh, I forget, and then us and nails, yeah, and ruckus, and, wow. and ruckus, yeah. That's a crazy. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty line. sure the lineup was my shitty band that literally didn't even have a bass amp because Walter Delgado did not show up with the bass amp in time for us to start <laughs> the show because we were touring in a minivan, right? And then it went nails, <laughs> ruckus. You no, didn't ask. You didn't ask Keith Paul, bro. I didn't know anyone. You could have asked. Who's Keith Paul? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Keith, Keith was the original bass player at Twitching Tongues. And he, was the, he was the bass player at Ruckus at the time. He had the chain strap. Yeah. And was uh, Walter was the person bringing the bass cap. Oh, okay. So it was like started. Walter didn't yeah, show why? up at the time. Yeah, right. We were there, dude. Well, so anyway, McWorld. 
yeah, was that? this like? Oh, and then they played the harshest noise music to get us out yes. of the venue ASAP. As soon as awesome. Rotting Out finished, it was like, get out right now. Uh, the, no, Mick there's Wilson. no rhythm. There's no rhythm to noise. <laughs> it was a squat, like oh. in like what East LA or something. Yeah, it was uh, with. And it was called Mick World because all the McDonald's characters were were painted on the front, like door and window. Hell yeah! It was dope. Who's your favorite? <sighs> Hamburglar. Got to be. I'm, it's got to be. Listen. He's he's closest to my morals. Listen, <laughs> yeah, that is true. I gotta say, I'm a grimace man. Grimace is great. You Have you, did you guys get the stupid toys? The, no, the I really want happy I really wanted it. But they look really cool, and I, I want to resent it. it, but I'm just like, damn, I really want these. No, they're hmm. cool. I tried I to find them, could I don't like, I don't get it. Like, I'm just, I don't, I don't. Is just that still, like, you don't like, stuff? like, usually the characters have no, no, I like stuff. two eyes, but now they have four. So oh, true. but like, yeah, it like and it's like streetwear or something. It's like okay. streetwear. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Some, I just don't, I don't, I'm just, just unaware of some that. bullshit like that. Yeah. It's not for everybody. You know, not everyone is an intellectual. No. So it's nice to know that Ian, you know, we, we on the show, we respect the grind because we've been there and you really, I don't know who the fuck you were, and you were grinding this whole time, you know? Mm. And that just goes to show, you were like, I've been touring since I was 17, and, like, I played a show that you didn't know, I didn't know. When I was 17. I was 17 at that time. Really? Are we the same yeah. age? Are you? Uh, okay, three, two, one, 30. 31. Okay. Oh, so you're you're just barely. <laughs> right. in. Just so you're older. That makes sense, because I was, I was 18, and I was touring hard, like, freshly, because I was out of high school. Uh, yeah, yeah. I basically went, started at seventeen, but I never had the like group of friends that was willing to go as hard as I wanted. Um, and we just didn't make good enough music yet to like actually achieve fan bases. So it, I would have really been useless. Well, a lot of people did that. So yeah, with shitty music. So I, you know, you never know. I met a guy. I went to. A wedding on Saturday. One of the first, the original members of Harm's Way got married. So it was a mandatory costume wedding. Right. So we were all there. And um, and I met a guy who had seen me and Chris play in like our high school band. Wow. In Double Cross. Like fucking legitimately almost 20 years ago. It was like, yeah, it's been crazy to see you guys like continue touring. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like having an existential crisis. Yeah, because it's like holy fucking shit. Yeah, he is. Uh, he has a pension and like a 401k and shit. Like yeah, straight up. Like he's he's like wow man. He's doing great. He's got a. Nest you guys there. have a podcast? We do have a podcast. No, it's yeah, really good. <laughs> We're, we might get manscaped. Good. We'll see. We might get. It. <laughs> we'll see. You guys, we'll you guys got the deck. You guys are pitching your deck. We got a deck. And, we got a deck. Yeah. We're decked up. I'm double bricked up at, at the thought of the deck. Yeah, there's a lot of th- a lot of things happening, but anyway, between Bully and RJC, what was going on? I just did a lot of friends bands. I like Bully was a band that I was like the leader of, and I was very creative with. And then I like stepped back to being just like a just a drummer for mm-hmm. so long, mm-hmm. and then I kept investing like my entire life and everything into every band I did. Cause I really am like the least casual person you could ever meet. So, cause everything is like, Oh, we're going all the way, you know? And then I had two bands that I was like really passionate about and the singers just fucked up the bands. And I was like, Oh, I think that the only person I can rely on is me. <laughs> so I think I need to start doing bands where it's, I'm the only person that needs to be around. And then that that's where RJC came from. Been down that road and it's, it's, it's a slippery slope, but it's also like, it's just so much easier. You know, it's so much easier. I mean, it's just like, it, and there's no like personal feelings. Like, and it, the, it works best when everyone is like very personally motivated and, 
and also feels very enriched by it. But at the same time, there's the there's no ego in everyone else's involvement of like, okay, if you can't play this show or this tour, we still play this show or tour. And and uh yeah, it's one person having the stopping power over something that can move forward is not great. So uh but, I want to uh, bring up a, 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 an intersection okay. in time. You and I were on the same spirit flight to this is hardcore. Really? And I sat like three rows behind you as a red eye. You didn't say what's up? No. What's about, were you were you playing or were you just vibing? Oh, it was playing. Okay. That was the year we played. And I tried to say uh, what's up to Taylor at this is hardcore because he said nice things about um rjc publicly and i was like all right i'm gonna talk to taylor young let's go uh -huh. he and I, he's he's like yeah uh-huh you know like <laughs> I, it I, is a, I i, I like, remember yeah. distinctly posting a video of the set yeah no and that was i think that was the start because like i think six months later or whatever is when i work with taylor for the first time uh -huh. but i i it, that was my first time and i was texting with him about it the other day of being like yeah you're so stern i just thought that there was no way that you liked me. That was just him. that's just him though. He's sick. He's it's listening so, to this right now. So, so I just so fast funny. forwarded it. Like we're like mid twenty nineteen at this point, so we could just skip. Yeah, you're no, we're not that. skipping shit. What were you saying, Bo? It's just so funny because when like my meeting of Taylor was not that. He was like the young kid in nails, and we were the young kids in Europe. But together. but he loved Harm's Way. You yeah. know. Yeah. You guys were peers. I'm yeah. like a fucking stranger. I'm like, <laughs> but but like you're from the same place. No, no, I'm from Enumclaw, Washington. He, when did he you move to California? I moved in 2018. So this was oh. like, okay, yeah. well, okay. No, I didn't, and I didn't know anybody. I I uh, I really keep to myself. Like I don't really socialize too much or go out of my way to meet people. So, uh, yeah, it's not like I was like at any functions or whatnot. I'm, I ended up at the pit. I mean, with, neither is he. So you got yeah, I ended up at the pit with self-defense family, uh, in summer 2018. And then when I, once I moved to LA, I saw all y'all at candy cane lane in your pajamas walking around. And I was like, That's right. what's up Taylor. And then I was like, that guy doesn't remember me. <laughs> You got this complex, man. You think I oh yeah. You think I, you're unimportant. Well, so, and you're that's special. a real thing. That, People have that. John from Vane confessed that he thought that Harm's Way hated him. Yeah. Thought you guys like, hated me. I don't I don't know. <laughs> like, He's like you, the most likable guy. And I was like, I dude, why oh, on crazy. Earth, we we love you? What are you talking about? I saw like, the first time I met him, I was I was Googling you gotta hate like, him for it. adopt an adult. Like how to <laughs> how to adopt guy with family, you know? It happens. Yeah, it does. It happens with me. I think people hate me. Candy Cane Lane's really gone downhill, man. Speaking of which, what what is Candy Cane? Lane? Nobody hates Bo. Okay. What's what's I'm saying? It's a comp. It's a people have it. Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm. Candy I think mine I'm just comes from the fact Ian's that feelings. I um, mine comes from the fact that I always played in different bands and would always be like either like hair grown out or facial hair grown out and then shaved and then like I'd never looked the same twice and I was always in a different band so everyone I would like re-meet every person I met for like <laughs> six years mm. uh, constantly. Every time I saw them, I'd be like, That's hi, fair. I'm Ian. And they're like, oh, nice to meet you. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we didn't meet. <laughs> we didn't meet three months ago. Yeah. yeah. What is Candy Cane Lane? Candy Cane Lane is a Every city has a Candy yeah. Cane Lane. It's a neighborhood where that is swagged the fuck out with Christmas lights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where they all collectively go hard as fuck. But now it's shot. I felt like it was underwhelming the year that I went. Dude, when it when I was in high school, it was lit. Ever, literally lit. Now we had to <laughs> we had to conserve power. We do. It's horse shit. And they had new decorations and stuff. Now those decorations are they've had the same like fucking Spider Man cutouts in these mm. yards for ten years. Could now. you imagine right. having the mental illness that would be wanting to buy completely new decorations every year for and and like grass, oh, like that but that's your that's cheap. your thing. When you live there, you 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 got a responsibility to impress. I think the me. homeowners association got to be bought. They got to be given the budget, you know. 
There's no way there's an HOA in that. In then that how community. is it coordinated? Because you know where you live. Okay, you're like I moved. One guy who probably family. moved or something, and that's why it's falling apart. One, fo- yeah, the guy like he or the guy who household. went door to door. Yeah, Santa, Santa motherfucker. <laughs> right up. So RJ, well, I'm excited what, for us to go this year together, Colin. I, I'm, yeah, I'll absolutely go with you, even though you fucking moved out of the valley like a coward. What's up with that? Oh, you're not in the house anymore. No, I moved out. Wow. Scum. Even though I never lived there, I moved out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just right, just as we got to know him, he, he was out of my life. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't wait to meet you in six months, Colin. I know. The real the real Ian. Yeah, after being around you for ninety minutes a day for two years. Get to get to know the real Ian in this podcast episode right now. Right now. Yeah. It's about time. What was your best Halloween costume? Ever? Like your favorite, you felt the most. Achieved. I mean, honestly, last the minion that I did this year is the minion is an accomplishment. Thanks, man. It's a commitment. It was a big commitment, but I think like I, I'm getting. You know me. I got some like wild body dysmorphia, so I'm always like something's wrong, something's right. I don't know what I'm doing. That that when seeing the minion. Was where I was like, I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing all right. I'm gonna keep it up. Yeah, uh, you look pretty huge. I want to stay a minion now. After I did <laughs> that, you know. I think my favorite of yours is Dangle. Dangle was good. It was really good. Yeah. What about yours? I did Steve Rule. Or I did Dwight. That was the, incredible. Oh, the Dwight, Steve Rule is an the awesome Dwight, costume, dude. Funny thing, same suit. <laughs> and I was gonna do the ancient yeah, aliens the, the guy. Tan blazer. I was going to do an ancient aliens guy. Same suit. Same suit. Just What is your favorite same. costume, man? Your minions costume. <laughs> <laughs> what about Halloween candy? What what's your uh, what's your Mount oh. Rushmore? I'm a I'm a I'm a fruity guy. Oh. I like oh. I like sour candy, Disgusting. fruity candies. Huh. Yeah. Uh, We'd be perfect tr- as a trick or treating <laughs> duo cuz I usually just toss them. Yeah, I chuck the chocolate. I, I don't Wow. wow. I, I'll, wow. I'll eat I'll eat two Reese's cups and I'm done. Do you want to check flights home and maybe we can still catch a trick or treat tonight? And <laughs> yeah. Come back? yeah, they're doing it tonight. You can you get you start applying the paint now and I'll I'll get there. <laughs> Absolutely. A half Luckily I'm on the East Coast, so you know by the time you oh, know, you just perfect. Dude stay uh, one time. What's your the Mount thing Rushmore? about Halloween candy is it tastes different. It's all a little different. Something happens when it's being manufactured. Small smaller. batch, you know? Yeah, it's small, smaller. Literally small batch. The so ratios are different. Mm-hmm. So my opinion right. changes than compared to the normal size stuff. Yeah, so what's your fun size Mount Rushmore? Three Musketeers. <sighs> it's wow, perfect God. as a bite size. Wow. As a whole bar, it's insane. Interesting. But as a bite size, it's delightful. Twix, okay. Kit Kat. Um, Charleston Chew, dude. The mini oh! Charleston Chew. Oh, oh I wouldn't eat any of this. Oh my god! To the to the soul, he hits me. <laughs> Charleston Chew, the goat, dude. When I was in Charleston, North, I was driving through Charleston one time, just saluting that motherfucker. So damn good, Charleston Chew. You never find it here, but that's easy. That's the fucking George Washington on the Mount Rushmore. You throw that bastard in the freezer. Oh my god! Oh, man, <laughs> shattering in your mouth deliciously. What else is on there? Twix, Kit Kat are probably on there too for me. What a combo! I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you a crazy one, maybe. Okay. Whoppers. Dude, oh, I'm a big, Jesus! I'm a wa- People hate malts. See? I, love I gotta Whoppers. go. Love this is malts. crazy. <laughs> Whoppers. Whoppers. Are, Whoppers. Are you guys supreme. 90 years old? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what. I got to look up what it is. So please. That's an actual make me gag. Whoppers? I will gag. Yes. I I mean, I said myself it was crazy. Yeah, I'm just saying. But the the fact that both of you are into them is just. So into it. Disgusting. What on earth are these? Oh, you can't. That's a road. (laughs) These things. That's that old man shit. That's them root You moved barrels, it to brother. the area of the screen I can't see. That's the old lady candy. Hold on. I don't even know what I'm doing. That's, that's yeah, like mine's going to be saltwater, taffy, oh, um, 
Those chewy mints. Uh, <laughs> mints? <laughs> Those chewy mints. The other, the restaurant peppermint. Um, <laughs> the, the the toothpaste powder. You like yeah. uh, uh, what's the what's the other mint? What's the famous mint? Junior York's mint. peppermint patties. Oh. You like those, Ian? Yeah, I do like those. Okay, so that's like, that's your chocolate exception. I mean, like Reese's Reese's cups, but again, I'm over it after two. Get Reese's cup away from me. Yeah, <sighs> you know what? When it comes to mini, like like the individually wrapped Sour Patch Kids, you just kind of shotgun. Those are great. You get those. Is it that, one another kid? one that's kind of good? One kid individually wow. wrapped, but no, the there is not fish one bullshit. Kid. There, I guess there is. I swear to God. Oh, I swear to God. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've been trick or treating, so I'm just completely out of the loop. Why well, just buy candy? Like I'm gonna go buy candy tomorrow. <laughs> I would rather think that you are out there tonight no. hitting the I, pavement. Maybe me too, but it's way like it's way more like oh yeah, of course Bo hits the fucking Rite Aid candy sale. After. Right, we don't have Rite Aid in fucking Chicago. the CVS candy sale. Sorry, Walgreens. You wish you had Rite Aid. They got the best ice cream. Did this guy world. right here? One Individual. single kid. One child. Wow. I don't make anything up ever. That that is true. <laughs> Just not creative enough. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Cannot. Tell He's got. Him. No, I was gonna. I was gonna say maybe the meanest. Thing I've, I've ever said. No. It's Halloween. Say it. Say it. <laughs> it's Halloween. Say it. He's got no lies. He's got no riffs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not true, though. It's almost true. Now, you wrote the <laughs> in the hard <laughs> intro. People love that thing. That was one take. One riff. He's got one, one riff. I got one, one take. riff. He did Easy. it. All right, Ian. Let's get into RJC a little bit here. Okay. This You're is probably where I became familiar with like you. Yeah, me too. As yeah, as I feel like yeah, as as, as did everyone most else people random before. But you and like you you broke down the concept kind of of like, all right, I'm gonna do this band. Whoever can do it can do it. And then you was was did self defense inspire that at all? Where you could kind like because you were you done stuff with self defense, right? Like uh, RJC started. In like the very beginning of 2017, and I think I had just played in self defense like six months earlier or something. So I joined self defense, whatever joining self defense means at that point. Yeah. Uh, right before then, definitely that was an inspiration. It just was like, shit, there's no way to go. Like, if I ever I want to make anything out of music, and it was kind of getting to the point where I was like, Oh, I'm going to move on from music soon. Like oh. that, that was honestly the way I felt where I was just like, I kind of never achieved anything and like, and artistically didn't really feel like I had, I, I did a band called Seattle's new gods that I was really proud of, <clears throat> but like, you know, completely obscure, you know, very proud of it artistically, but it just was like, you know, nobody knew who the fuck we were. Sure. And, uh, and I was kind of like, yeah, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to move to LA and like try to really actually get good at directing and, and doing something else with my life probably because this music shit just clearly I'm not very good at it. Wow. Um, and then uh, RJC happened. And again, I just have this huge problem of not being able to be casual about anything in my life. Right. And it just became the driving force for literally everything. And it, and it almost worked because I always felt there was an expiration date on music for me mm -hmm. where I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this like for the next handful of years and then give it up and go on to the next chapter. And so like made it so I just was like, I have to do this many tours. Otherwise, this is pointless. Why am I even fucking here? And it worked yeah, out. To you like you like toured as soon as COVID ended. Where I mean, we'll we'll as we skip some things, but you toured like spitefully. Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna do, do this mean? thing that that I don't want to do this Between this hard. Between oh. um, August 28th and December of 2021, whatever the from first show of the year to last yeah. show of the year, which was aug end of August to end of December, it was like 80 shows. Wow. Because between wow. there was a it started with an RJC tour, went into a 50 day uh, military gun tour. Then we did another, you know, three week RJC tour. And then there was like. <laughs> Yeah, I just 
50? Yeah, five yeah, zero. Yeah, we did five, five days. 50 day. Yeah, 50 Where? show. It was more days than 50. Right. Where? 50 shows. In the U.S., Where right? Where? It was just a 50-day U.S. tour? Yeah, first first tour the band ever did. We got 50 cities in this country? <laughs> It was it was there was double up in California. Oh okay. Oh that explains. There yeah. you go. You know who's got a lot of cities? Ohio. Yeah. Cincinnati. Which I've only ever done Ohio, like one almost. at a time. I've never Dude, done the Dave, Ohio. Cleveland, tour yet. Cincinnati, Cleveland. Columbus, like Kent. Kent. Uh you, you know what I mean? Akron. Akron. It's Toledo. Toledo. Oh my god. They have a lot of cities. That's so it's, many. So many. Well, when you're driving through it, it feels like so many, you know? Columbus? No. Oh, yeah. We said Columbus. Ian. Did you? Columbus oh. was second. I wouldn't. I played there recently and I was like, damn, this show's rocks. Columbus? Uh, Ohio can be very good. Yeah. It's fucking huge. It's like huge. Florida. Florida's got a ton of cities, too, that you can play. Florida's fucking massive, though. Yeah. I mean, Ohio, when you're driving home from like, and you leave Pennsylvania and you're like, all right, made it to Ohio. The next day, you're like, holy shit, we're in Ohio still. Yeah. Well, dude, we we ended the Cannibal Corpse tour in in uh, outside of – is is Fort Myers outside of Miami? What's the one that's, like, near Miami? No fuck. I think I it's Fort know. Myers. I think I could be wrong. And You never lied yet, so I, it's I, for, I, it's, uh, to, to my knowledge, it's for sure Fort Myers. I'm simply incapable. Yeah. And I, I started the overnight drive, and I drove 10 hours, and I got us to almost Atlanta. Ten hours, yeah, all in Florida. So you hit the Florida Georgia line, straight up. You know, they we went straight tracks. to the Dwarf House, to the fucking Chick Fil A oh, house, straight. There. Baby, you're a song you make me. That's a hit, dude. Window, down. Ian. I know you fuck with that Cruise. one. I only know God, your mama, and me. You don't know Cruise. I don't know it. You're gonna shit yourself in that beautiful <laughs> bed behind you after you hear that thing. After we wrap. So RJC, pre before going on the fifty days and the whatnot, you got this gimmick. You're like, all right, I'm gonna assemble my fucking personal Avengers. <laughs> I got eight people. I I loved the promo pick that was like seven or eight people in it. Yeah, that was That's where I was cool. like, oh, okay, so I'm the five people are in this band at a time, and whoever can play can play. Yeah, kind of a brilliant concept. Yeah, Ge- genuinely, yes. Especially when it rotates around a drummer singer, <laughs> it's, it was yes. not uh, not a typical setup at all. Wow. Drummer, the least reliable position in any band. That's Very the reason true. I had to be the drummer singer. Is I yeah. was like, well, this band's never gonna get off if I have to replace a drummer, and I'm gonna be such an asshole to whoever the drummer is because I'm, there's no one that's gonna You're be able it. to like play it exactly that I the way I want. Dude, that's been my curse my whole life. Mike, you don't think Mike, you don't think you don't think your brother's got the sauce? No, it's not that. Taylor doesn't want to play drums that I write. Um, Whenever I'm doing, he's like, "No, it's a pain in the ass. I don't want to do it." <laughs> Mike, Mike got like really close, but like had to had to. He had his own style, so there were things that he had to change. And dude, people's personal styles are just bullshit. They're crazy. But Kale, <laughs> Kale told us that like learning songs that Taylor and I played in are like what or like how he practiced drums. Mm. So he, he just got it right away. Most of the time, there's a lot of like, stu- like me. See, I feel me- like I could play an iron lung for that reason. Like if like that was legitimately where I learned blasting and, and like mm. creative drumming was from iron lung, like wow. basically creating drum riffs. And so I could do a lot of those songs that from memory. Me with uh Jordan from No Warning and Terror, Todd Jones. Carry on, Terror, and No Warning. You think you, the, could, the, you could just the, easily be in all three bands? <laughs> they were just the bands that I, like, learned. Right. Like, I learned how to do triplets to Spit My Rage, you know, how to do, like, gallops and stuff. <laughs> or the fast part and one with the underdogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. I would come home. So let's hear some, huh? <laughs> Bust out a guitar. Rage, Bill. Yeah. Dude, so we've talked about doing um about wearing our costumes for this because it is Halloween. Yeah. And I was gonna hook up the quad cortex straight into this and just play like the any clean metallic riff the whole episode. That was gonna be my bit. The background. 
Just would have been I would have awesome. killed you minute two. I would have found a <laughs> way. I would have been online ordering bees. You know? <laughs> bees. Deliver here, explode. And that's when I start playing fucking Fade to Black. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that's good shit. Uh, are there any are there any memories of those early RJC tours that come to mind? Of like, hey, these shows are actually kind of good. That's crazy. But the, oh, but this still sucks. That's crazy. <laughs> no, no. So I mean, I I've always had like such a sunny disposition where it's like, oh man, twenty people tonight. That's great. Because I mean, we're playing blast beat hardcore there's not a high ceiling for that and it no. was just like literally you know i remember breaking a hundred monthly listeners and being like holy shit dude we're fucking doing it you know and uh but that's from like you did that it's not the same as like a guy who's in been in a bunch of bands and starts a new band and people hear True. you you did that from scratch basically but I got that. Then I got that treatment with Military Gun, where there was an audience right off the bat because of like the hard work <laughs> of sick, yeah. But you earned that. RJC. You can't. There's no. There's no way to 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 belittle that. You earned that. Yeah, I mean, we and grinded the songs it out are good. For sure. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. That doesn't take away. That doesn't take away from anything. I'm not else. saying you guys are clarifying it as if like I'm. No, no, like, I'm we're, just, we're clarifying I'm just, it. The, the, the I'm being judged on the concept. No, 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 no I'm no. processing the the thought. The grind beforehand, it's it's like going to college, you know? You're not you're not getting paid for your high level job because of your your experience just your your ability to do that job. You're getting paid for the research that you you put in, the time you're Well, I think to learn. another big part of like why Military Gun took off out the gate too is that I think a lot of people chose to do nothing throughout the pandemic where I treated unemployment insurance as as a label advance. And we did the SWAT record. We did crime and punishment. We did the, and then we did multiple military gun records. And so it was like, where I think a lot of people were like holding things to wait for touring to come back and all yeah. these things. I was just like, yeah. And here's another record and here's another record and here's another record instead of being like, Oh, well, well, you know, I'm going to wait. You did it. You were one of the only people I know that did it. Right. I feel like. And you still have so much in the tank. It's crazy. I got so much in the tank. It's crazy. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> but now <laughs> I'm touring. You have too much too, in the tank. You know, and now, now you know, the, the writing suffers from being on the road. Well, but you, it's fine right now. You got a you buffer. Have, you have so much. <laughs> yeah. and like, which, which worries me for you because I, I've been there where you have to wait so long for people to hear something that is totally done. Yeah. That you're, you're, you're resentful of it. By the time people hear it. Oh, wow. I'm not. I've chose. I mean, we, we, there was easy paths towards like us having out the record we're going to release next year. We could have had it out this fall. You know, wow. if there was paths towards that, but we chose to wait for the label that we wanted and like do it the way that, that I felt was proper, you know, instead right. of it being like, let's go the easy route and, and, and the the songs are good. That helps. That like, <laughs> I you, I have faith you did in the great. songs. Therefore, I'm not like, oh, someone else is gonna write this song in the next six weeks and release it before me. I am nervous that I've played the songs for too many people. I'm like, what if someone wants to like outright fuck me over and steal one of these and release it before oh I? My could? God, I really I want to steal that one so bad. I would I would pull up with a gun to someone's house for sure. <laughs> I think that would be absolutely justified. Yeah. You're on. Like, yo, I showed you this song. And then here it is. Yeah, if any Explain. bit of my melody popped up in someone else's song, I'm like, you're removing it from mm -hmm. streaming right now, or <laughs> your house is burning down. <laughs> All right, I'll delete this from the episode just in case, <laughs> just for evidence. You let me know. Are you so, in full military gun mode now, mentally? No, like, I uh, my my current thing is every time I pick up a guitar, I try to write two RJC riffs. Just like uh, just some type of part, like a blast riff or a breakdown riff, and to start assembling songs. I, I think I wrote the best RGC song yet, which justifies having another record. And conceptually, just from one track. Yeah, I'm like, this the is the best one I've, I've written. Why would I not try to then do that nine more times? 
True. <laughs> and, and um, you know, conceptually, like the band was built around my brother's incarceration and he's out and living with me now and, um, you know, do one last record with him as involved as I am. So he like, it seems a, like the, 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 the logical conclusion to the project. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. perfect. And he put out a rap track today. He did. He put out music, Vatican boss. Everyone got to check that out. Is this his first musical endeavor ever? First musical endeavor ever. Wow. Straight yeah. to SoundCloud. Where the Straight fucking to SoundCloud. titans grow. He's rapping. Incredible. From from the cell to the cloud, you know? <laughs> 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 That'll be the Netflix documentary about him someday. Yeah. Good shit, man. So RJC, you're still you're still there. I I figured maybe that ship sailed. Yeah, I, because I the same. because you're a historic bag chaser, you know, you've yeah. chased the bag, you've found it, and yeah, but and I that, think there's a bigger bag left on the table still, or just RJC. more, just more. Just an Yo, Frank, bag. that that uh, guitar player from my cam wears an RJC hoodie every day, and I get talked, I get literally people are tagging me about him wearing our shit. Like, That's huge. We released a record. We're going tour with my camera. Dude, they're, they're, the, the MCR heads are like buck wild. The oh. one I saw today, I'm going to try and get it up on the screen here, I, is I, him I, with David Copperfield. <laughs> well, can you just pop it in? <laughs> yeah. Pop it in right here. It's, it's uh, Frank from My Chemical Romance with David Copperfield. <laughs> That's the coolest. Wearing an RJC hoodie. Now that is some straight up David Copperfield shit. And, and yeah, yeah. a multi-time ex-girlfriend of mine. Lived with a girl who dated someone from MCR. Wow. And would get like follow requests from MCR heads. So my wow. ex girlfriend, like they're that. That removed. I, I did an interview at Aftershock with LS Dunes, which yeah. is Frank's yeah. new band. It wasn't, I, the interview wasn't with Frank, it was with Tucker from Thursday and Anthony Green. But them like reposting the picture of the interview has made it like it's been mo a month and it's been a nonstop flood of MCR people just like that. That that was how the mini lore was for me. I got a lot of like not fest type wow. type MFs in my followers. That's what now. I'm talking about. That's, there we go. That's the hardcore <laughs> universe giving back. Spreading yeah. the love. That's right. Yeah, they uh, MCR set a record for Riot Fest. For Is that uh, true? For merch sales, yep. For merch sales, yep. And they Dude. know that because they took a cut. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I I don't know numbers or hard numbers. I just know that fact. Yeah, that they set a record. Yeah, I bet for you. one day, single day. Uh, at aftershock, Slipknot headline day one. Uh huh. Kiss headline day two. Uh huh. MCR day three. Eclectic. Sm way bigger crowd than either band. I just I just missed that i just wasn't i was street punk already like i was yeah, I, sucked. I, I was like, i weird. was i was i like missed that whole th shit but like you can go back now hear the tracks and be like damn. well i'm not okay i i can hear it in my head right now and i'm like oh that's a fucking it's a fucking song. track man I, is I, insane I, and now seeing the guy wear the, the hoodie, I'm like, I should be I should become a fan of him now. Ride, dude. Yeah, ride for yeah. MCR straight up. Yeah. Suck the so dick I'm, that I'm gonna become <laughs> an uncomfortable <laughs> adult fanboy. I'll, oh oh yeah. Yeah, you should. Absolutely. What? Well <laughs> we gotta finish that phrase. Suck the dick that <laughs> Suck the dick that sucketh thee. Is that good? Mm. Suck it. That could that could be a shirt for y'all. Yeah. Don't worry about that, brother. Oh my God! Don't even worry. They're they're clamoring for merch, but you would not believe what. Colin, we, Colin, and, and okay, Brooke wait. Miller. Let's let's talk about this. Okay. There, there's no way for podcast merch to not be corny as fuck. Uh -huh. So yeah. just go into it knowing that. No, and, and, and get your bag. It Dude. is, and it's it's so it's so okay. on brand. Yeah, for the show. So wait, you're saying you've done it? Oh, it's it's done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Colin, Colin, and Brittany really clobbered in Crack idea. code Brittany Miller friend of the show friend of the Ian as well yes Mac yeah. yes long time friend speaking of SWAT your band with with Mac sex with a terrorist 
Is that yes. what it stands for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sex with a terrorist, aka SWAT. Patrick Kinlan fronts it. I recorded it on my iPhone. Sick. Is I've never Band camp is, only. Is, is Mac good at drums? I've never I've never been like Mac. Are you good at drums? Mac's good at drums. Can he rip? Can, punk, punk drummer for sure. Mm. Yeah, he's a fucking. He's got that the 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 like no effects beat. Yeah. Uh, left hand leader, same as really same as yourself. Yeah. Well, he and he and I have never discussed that. Hmm. Yeah, it's a true. I'm a right hand lead, but I think I still think left handed. So I like send off before the fill. So there's like a, hmm. you know, like there's like a hmm. a brief moment where there's no snare. Or, but um, in your mind, boo, you're, you're dunga, dunga. here. Boo, in my mind, I just like go, you know, like yeah. I send it off with like a symbol before I'm I hit, listen like, to a, that a in mind. I, I, it's a curse, man. It's the worst. Colin, what did you learn to to drum to? Like, what was like? Because like I'm thinking of of you said punk drummer Chris. It was like AFI and the Misfits. Chris was like uh, all, like all that. I'm gonna give you two guesses. <laughs> okay, E Town Concrete. No, two <laughs> two guesses, two records. Think about. Think about me. You, at how how old were you when you fourteen up? years old? So were you still in Connecticut? It's not, but I fresh out. Fresh out. Okay. Sepultura. I mean, what? kind. Yeah, I mean, I I was definitely big on. Yeah, yeah. Did that one a lot. But come on, you're you're overthinking this. Okay, hey, for fresh. Hey, for yes. And Obviously. satisfaction. Satisfaction and death threat. Big big one, but Not was, death threat. Hundred demons. No 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 the 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 the, hey, the Connecticut aspect was satisfaction. Master Killer was big for oh, okay. for me. Yeah, and that, so that was that was like I'm gonna play along. Yeah, uh, to Master Killer. And, but, uh, Urban Discipline, State of the World Address, huge for me too. Drum wise, interesting. Still like that the, the DNA of those is very much just like permanent perma locked in. What about you? Ian? When yeah, when you were, when it was like I got to do this. Like, did, when did you know you could play drums? And yeah. how did you figure that out? Because you sound I, like uh, you I, picked I, up drums as a utility. I did. I, well, I wanted to start a power violence band when I was fourteen, and um, I started drumming and singing because we needed a singer and a drummer, and so I so started right a two piece power violence band. Oh, yeah, I, that's why I could do it is that it's the way I learned to play drums. So it just was the the only way and I, it was blasting and it was D beats and it, it was all the shit that I do now. I literally am just a child still. That's basically mm -hmm. the, the sum total of my so, parts. So, so but were but yeah, any, it is beautiful. When you were like practicing, were there any records you would play along with? Or did were you Iron just... Lung? Iron Lung was huge. Um, it's like Iron Lung and dystopia but a dystopia was too complicated and they did double kick so i was not into that are you like still not a double kick man? couldn't hack it can't can't double kick at all i was supposed to fill in for candy um on a tour with rjc and i got kicked out of the band after the first practice because i was so bad at double kick really this is this is breaking they were polite they were like yeah, well, no of course of they course, were like they're like andrew could just do it and i was like well why didn't we just go with that from the start why yeah. was i and why was i even <laughs> you could have asked me to play guitar and i would have been great like right. and but no i've never played live guitar though that's that's one of my future goals it's hard man it's a different it's a different animal to me just want to rock out playing an instrument and not have the, to do so much you know the first God's hate show like set that was like there was like two songs on a on a backtrack Zabalba show or something mm. was the second time I'd ever stood up playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'd only that, now sat. that that is a different that's a whole other animal. Standing up and sitting down. I can fucking I can play anything sitting down. Anything. No problem. Standing up. <sighs> I'm pretty Don't bad at guitar, both standing up and sitting down. <laughs> well, <We're> practice standing. <laughs> Do yeah. yourself a favor. It's, well, quit sitting. Get okay. up. I mean, yeah. when you're writing from now on. Well, I guess just, unless you're planning on playing, like you're going to add you playing guitar to military gun songs or something? Never. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah. 
No, I'm saying I want to eventually I want to have fun and play guitar in a band. That's why that. SWAT existed was I was like, oh, but we'll never we're never going to play a show. So it doesn't matter. Believe Would you it or not? I think I've done everything. I've drawn. I drummed in a high school band. Wow. Like a like a, a hardcore band. That you was terrible. Sucked ass or what? Yeah, it was awful. But we nice. did it. I've played live bass. I've sang Play and I've bass. played drums. <laughs> Can't wait to play bass. Can't I will say, Colin, answer. I I understand why you're on drums in God's Hate, and obviously it's supernatural. But I do miss you playing guitar. I appreciate that. I do. I miss it. But the the difference in of ability in the two instruments in me is catastrophic. Which is crazy too, because like I remember watching you guys at LDB, the one year where we both played. Yeah. And I was on Martine's side, mm. so I couldn't really see you as well. But I was I like, didn't, I, 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 I practice those songs a lot. Yeah. But Wait, you did you me, just replace yourself with Taylor? Yeah. And I, <laughs> and then I replaced Kale. Okay. Yeah. But it's I remember crazy. watching and watching Martine play the songs. I was like, oh, these songs are, these songs are like, like they're heady. Like, there's there's a lot. Yeah, of course. There's a lot going on. There's a difference between writing and playing, though, you know, because mm. I can go man, 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 in my head and be like, okay, now play that. You know, I wrote yeah, right. that and I'll go, now you have to play it, not me. You know, so <laughs> that's my anything. entire life is I just write something fucked up and then be like, all right, good luck. And I'm going to rush if I'm playing, if I am playing drums. So, you're <laughs> so all gonna die. To play it faster. yeah, you're all going to die. <laughs> is uh, is military gun going to use tracks, do you think? Um. I would rather build out the band to to, to have more members uh, yeah. for a live band because I I just really like like the classic rock setup and actually performing instead of like there being a computer element. I, I'm down for either. Um, obviously, it takes making a lot of money to add band members. So it does. It would. I mean, the, the only the the person that would benefit from that the most would be you, just because yep. the time would never be. There's never a factor of you being like that was too fast. But then, by slow. association, everyone else playing too is going to be playing to a click, essentially. Yeah, I yeah. I think for some songs we should get a click for like the LP stuff. We're doing this tour with White Reaper, and I, like my big question with that, I'm like, do do their fans want to be yelled at for we're our 40 minute set? And so I'm like, I'm thinking about building out and bringing the Mellotron with us and doing a lot of our like LP songs instead of like just the set we've been doing, which is like all about energy and do instead they, making a little they, bit more. How are dynamic. they reacting to it so far? Who? Oh, that's not the tour we're on now. That, that oh. tour is in March. Yeah. Oh. So What's the we're, tour we're, we're on now? You, you're the first guest ever. I think that's currently on tour. On tour. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we are, we did a tour with citizen and then we went into headlining shows with MS paint afterwards. Mississippi paint friends of the show. As I show you got to have DD on. Love DD on this podcast would be incredible. Just a character, <laughs> biggest um, character. That was similarly. Harm's Way doesn't play to a click or any tracks or anything. We've always and we have songs where like Nick is hitting a sample every downbeat. You know, like the, like where it's just like very monotonous and tedious, but like being able to kind of whip out a song and not be reliant on something is very appealing to like our yeah. punk brains, you know? And I also just get scared of like things fucking up of like, what if that night that you can't hear nothing? I mean, like it's where, I mean it's but you're news. in pro venues when you do that yeah. type of shit. So. You like, make the news every time that happens. Yeah. yeah. And we <laughs> talked about this on, on the Vincent episode, but what I didn't mention was like, I saw a ghost play once in, in like a, 500 cap room at a surprise set and the drummer got off the click and fucked up the entire band one song or multiple one, songs? one song just one okay, song but okay. like but you're you talking see, about it here on this podcast you know but you can yeah, see you literally all of just them. made news yeah <laughs> you could see all of them like like looking at him like what the fuck is going on yeah. and he's just they're asking me to get kill switch or something and be like yeah you know that motherfucker got Spanked in the probably back fired that. for all yeah. we. I mean, who knows? His Dude, the drummer, was... drummer on the first couple, <sighs> Ripper. He was open handed too. Yeah, I just got into Ghost. Dude, the first dude, those first couple years that Ghost was around was so fun. Yeah, our tour, we got real into him, didn't we? Label man, I'm going so backwards now. They're on Metal Blade. 
No, Loma Vista. They're they're Ian's oh. label mates. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're label mates with them. So you're going backwards. Uh, I, well, so they had this like. I don't even know if I should be talking about this. Yeah. I mean. uh, they have a, a song that I thought was really fun. And then I got, I really like the new record straight up. I really like the new record. And then, um, then now I'm just like finding all the rest of the hits. When that came out and, and knowing that like all the amps are just like cranked orange heads, like there's nothing. It's like the driest record production wise. Mm-hmm. I loved it. It was, it, it was so I love the way awesome. it sounded. And, and I think the that's one, maybe why no respect, no diss to ghost. If you're watching this, you know, <laughs> lifelong, <laughs> lifelong fan. Love. I love hope. Band. So much more successful than someone who would, you know, listen to this podcast. You never know, though. <laughs> I got some people hitting me up who I'm shocked listening to this damn show. I think that's maybe why live I, I kind of had a bad time watching Ghost. Because mm. it, it's like so digital now mm. that like I'm, it's, I might as well just listen to the record. There's no mm. difference. It is. It's perfect. Yeah. I don't it's like, like I don't like perfect. a perfect set. I need some hu- humanity in it. You know, interesting. Yeah, but it, but that's not what people want when they're going to an arena show. Yeah, those dummies. I, I didn't see them at an arena. I saw them at yeah. the Wiltern. You know, what? Year? And it was already absolutely perfect to the extent where I was like, like, what am I? What's the point? Yeah, at a certain point, it is kind of like watching people just like air guitar. The air guitar to a, a to an album. I yeah. need, I need the the real. I need the raw, rawness. I'm gonna go the, in face paint. When they play next, just a fan. Just I'm just gonna be a fan now, and then That's, go backstage with the Loma Vista plug and be like, "Hey guys, I already met the great guy. show. You met the guy. The I homie? met the guy at, at, when I we, when I went to the label one day. Tobias. Uh, Tobias. Yeah. That, you know they they fucking schedule him to be there just to just to tickle you a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were already signed. We we were good. Oh, all right, cool. Well, good. Congrats, Loma Vista. That's huge. I, I, yeah, I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Thank you. Try my best here. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing your best. It's working. That was no, that's what that's what we waited to fucking release the LP for so long as we were like wanted oh. the this specific label and um took a long time but we got it. It's the right move. What's the story you're like? How how's how the shows? Well, any any weirdness? Any 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 anecdotes? Or are you you're, are you just the most boring person? <laughs> I'm the most boring the guy. I'm awesome. suck. I'm so boring. I'm uh, we suck. got rear-ended. <laughs> we got we got a uh, rear-ended in New York City, and our trailer got smashed up because, mm. of course, trailers are not made of like really quality materials. And I just bought the trailer. Um, <sighs> guy did not have insurance. Do you have uninsured motorist insurance? Oh, fuck no. I have the most bare bones. I drove without in- insurance for like 10 plus years. How do you not learn from like your friend Colin was damn near killed in this accident four, two, three years ago or whatever. I don't even know about everybody this. I know should have the best insurance in the world. Don't fuck around. Well, now no, you don't have a car, it. but I want you to get some good car. I, yeah, I haven't even I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but I don't have a car and I don't even have health insurance. I haven't You're had health insurance in like 10 animal. years. You are animalistic. I need to get health insurance. I'm going to hunt you. Health insurance would be really nice. You You guys are sick. I would fuck with it. I would would love some health insurance. (laughs) It'd be really cool. Uh, Providence, if you're, or uh, Kaiser or something, if you're listening. Kaiser. I'm looking for a sponsorship. If anyone is out there, Manscaped, if you want to pay for my health insurance. (laughs) Don't talk to Manscaped yet. We don't have them yet. Don't address Um, them. (laughs) Manscaped, if you're listening to this, I'm also going to start a podcast. Okay. Uh, it might have stronger numbers than this one. Who's to say? We'll see. Uh, Ours are getting pretty good. Ours the, uh, are getting pretty so good. anyway, we got rear-ended. The dude was not insured. Mm-hmm. And I realized my insurance was not going to do anything at all. So then it kind of came down. And then we like waited for the police to make a report for a long time. And it was kind of like, well, what are we going to do with a police report? There's nothing yeah, that can, there's right. nothing to be done with this. And then it That's was for, like, they're right. for your insurance, Ian. Did your, did your insurance? Yeah, but I, they're not going to do anything. I already called them and was like, are, are you, could you help me with this at all? And they're like, nah, you're fucked. Really? Yeah. They're like, we don't. He has, you, he has liability only. I have liability. I only oh worked if I pay him. So, Jesus Christ. Insurance is a fucking scam. Um, yeah, but it's a scam that if you don't use the scam, you get fucked. <laughs> 
Mm. Anyway. (laughs) It got... I will, really, I will say I really when, bleak with this guy because at yeah. one point it was like, all right, we're going to have to be like, give us all the money you got. Yeah. And imagine hitting somebody and then five guys all roll out of the van and you're just one guy alone. Yeah. And he really wanted to do the right thing. He stayed like he was not tripping. He was young like us, which probably oh, made wow. it even worse. Yeah. Um, But then it was like, he, he was like, I have three hundred dollars, and and we're like, all right, give us the three hundred dollars. I was, I didn't even do the shaking down, and uh, and to his name, he showed he Net showed worth us three hundred, and, and the three hundred was his bank account, and we were like, you know what, man, just just good. get out of here. Good, good yeah. for you. Good, oh. good for you. That's uh, I understand the thought process, but. In the we were out fucking seventeen hundred dollars to fix yeah. the trailer, you know, like like. Yuck. Uh, but he's a scumbag for sure. But like, I mean, I drove without insurance probably for, for a reason. no joke. Ten years, like yeah, I just got insurance for the first time because I'm a you're scumbag. Sick. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it just was. It got so bleak. It got so bleak. I will say, when when we had our trailer stolen in Vegas, we had. Multiple homeowners insurance, renters insurance. We had insurance on the trailer, on the van. It was all red tape and nothing covered anything. So like certain things, certain things are just like, sorry, you're going to have to talk to blah, blah, blah. Sorry, we're a scam. We can't help you. Yeah, but it's for an accident. It's different. Yours was, yours was, would have been entirely covered (laughs) if you had the right insurance. That's that's true. true. (laughs) (laughs) Who's to say, I don't but it looked so gnarly. So you got rear-ended, and the back of the trailer was hit so hard that it snapped the lock. It off snapped the, it the, the hitch off, and it hit the bumper. And then we had to drive with it just to get off the highway with it unhitched straight up. Oh my God. So Why then when chain? we stopped, when it was chained, but it just was. So like, if you stop, there's would, not like it just goes, yeah. and has to hit the van to stop. Uh, and that luckily it was brief, but uh, yeah. did any gear get fucked up or anything? Uh, a base amp got a knob snapped off. We we hey. came out unscathed because we had the you we had the uh, the luggage in the back, so the luggage padded the gear. Oh. How interesting! Wow, we yeah. do that. If you're listening, pillow. clever, yeah. Luggage first. We see luggage we first. have the fourth bench out, so that back area. Like that's all, that's luggage, because yeah. then you get to your hotel and you just open up the the van. You don't have to go into the trailer and unlock it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now what if but the now, trailer gets hit, Bowen? It's a really good What point. if the trailer gets hit? That's, Other I mean, notable stories are yes. the one night I did. So I, I'm, I'm kind of can be antisocial. And, yep. <laughs> and I was like, all right, you know what? Tonight. I'm going to get drunk so I can interact with people. So I got drunk, gave my keys to my band members, and I haven't seen them since. Oh. They got left in Portland, Oregon, on the wheel well and driven to be dropped in some random location. Two nights later, two nights later, trailer door left wide open overnight. Why? I'm your, your, I was in the hotel already, so I don't know. You, your guess is as good as mine. That's All I know is that everyone amateur. says it's not their fault. Same right. with the keys. It's somebody's fault. Well, the keys are your fault, 100%. How are the keys no, my fault? No, I gave no. it to them to are load they, the van Are they your the keys? Yes, but everyone knew the score. You said, I did guys, not do the loadout. Guys, I, I did not drank do myself anything. beyond comprehension, and no, I need no. you to do this for me. The key bearer assumes responsibility. The original bearer, right? No, 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 no. The new bearer. Ian is in the right completely. I gave my keys away for the rest of the night, and the fact that the van was being driven away from Who'd the you venue, give I to? assumed my keys were in the fucking ignition. Who'd you give them to? I gave them to Will. The only person I know who's not fault who, who's not at fault is our guitar player Waylon. Waylon is a saint. Waylon's never done anything wrong. With <laughs> I wholeheartedly believe that he's never hurt. He's never hurt a fly. Wow. Now he's pissed me off a couple times actually. 
Crystal Pack, friend of the show. She's with us right now. She's with you right oh, now. Oh, is she really? Yeah. She didn't want to listen to this live? <laughs> she was saying she's a big fan. I was like, you should go on. And yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, but not right now. This is my time to shine. This is the end so. Time, so she's going to have to wait. All right. Crystal, yeah. you'll get your turn. Good shit, man. Well, I'm sorry that that happened. Your, did that have your personal car keys on them too? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, not not uh, Audrey's car key. Not not that not that one. But the van oh, is my <laughs> vehicle. This is my daily right. driver. Uh, and the part that's most insulting to me, and I still haven't put these on a on a keychain. Um, I have all of my keys individually now. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I live my that's, life in that's chaos. So Ian. It's just, it's just spite. I, I refuse to accept this, and I'm going to show you what I refuse to accept. So you got copies made next to a rack full of key rings. Uh, <laughs> no, I said I'm going to hang out with my RJC band member Alex. Y'all can go do the keys because I didn't lose the fucking keys. Mm. Uh, uh, I can imagine you were real, actually shoot mad when that happened. I don't like. I've never like yelled or anything, but I'm just like. Whoa. What is this? Like, yeah. this is what I review. This is now my van key. That is hideous. <laughs> no authority to this at all. This I is would fucking, never use this that is key. A, I, I so you I refuse. Never... I refuse to put this on a key ring yeah. because it sucks. No, that's temporary. You could never turn me on with that key. <laughs> no, no. Never. So now this is my life. I I walk up onto stage. I unload my pockets with all of these. Spare keys. Oh, God. Unlabeled. Unlabeled. You know which one each one does? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know they're all their roles? Practice space one and two. Um, I, so, so I think the trailer being left open is, uh, is, is less forgivable than oh, losing yeah, the keys. That's, where were you? That's your whole life. At, at a hotel? Vancouver. Well, we were in Surrey. Yeah. Basically, no reason that everything we owned didn't walk away. Yeah, totally. Uh, if you were in Montreal, pfft, the hotel would have been stolen. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. Uh, yeah, yeah we we are like so lucky. Like, one of the touring bands with us was staying at the same hotel and literally started calling all of our phones at 4 a.m. because they went out to smoke weed, and we're like, "Hey, um, your trailer's just open." Which is really funny because we had a boot on the trailer. We put a boot on the trailer every night. So there was security measure in the boot <laughs> being there. And then yeah. just a wide open trailer where you could take all the shit. Good for you. What kind of boot do you guys have? Because we do the same thing. I, I don't know if it's like anything fancy. I don't know. It's got a W on the, the lock. Does it work? Wow. I, so I tried to it, roll with it one day just to see what, what would happen. And it, and it didn't move. Yeah. Wow. It'll, I mean, if if somebody wants to drive away, at least with the the one that we have is not like a city boot, like a big one. It's like yeah, a, we don't have anything like that. It's, it's like just like a claw. It, yeah, it's like a claw. We probably have the same yeah. thing. Is it red and yellow? It's red. I don't think it's red, yellow. Ours is like red and yellow. And you it, got you the McDonald's kinda, limited. Color yeah, I got the limited oh, one. Same one. And you just like he didn't get the new toys, but he got the he got that yeah, limited. That, uh, this one has four limited claws boot. instead of two. Right. <laughs> and this one, you like put it on, and and like if somebody wanted to drive away with it, they certainly could, and it would like goom, goom, like be yeah, yeah. crazy that, and loud. It's like the thing is like you just would have to get pulled over if you yeah. wanted to steal. steal and then we shit. back up. We back up against something. A curb. Yeah, that's the way. Anything. A wall. Ian didn't I do did. that. Mm. But Ian, Ian, Ian seems like he's like. It's up, you guys. Off with ye, and then and then they <laughs> fuck up, and you're like, what? They're the Lord of the Manor gets to gets to complain. But are you a helpful guy on tour, Ian? Uh, I help load in. I don't help load out. As the singer, that's fine. Not as the yeah. drummer, though. No, as the drummer. Oh, I mean, on RJC tour, I got no option. To, but to be like, yeah. I staged my shit early yeah. and fucking, yeah, no. When we when we did those shows together, was I helpful for you with the? Did we use your kit? You used our kit for sure. I set that motherfucker up every day, didn't I? No, because I don't think you did sound checks. Come on, did you do sound checks? You know damn well I helped you set that some bitch up. Tough to say. Tough to say, <laughs> Ian. 
Uh, no, I don't. I honestly don't remember. I had a parasite at the time, so oh, you was, did. You had a tapeworm. Thing. This yeah, is a I, different. I discovered I had a tapeworm at a God's Hate show. That's an interesting tour story. <laughs> yeah, this is a perfect Halloween story. Gave Ian a tapeworm. This is it's real like Treehouse of Horror vibes. So this is perfect for Halloween. Yeah, you were like, yeah, oh no, I lost ten pounds. Please hit me. I've never <laughs> known anyone who's ever had a parasite. I lost like thirty pounds, I think. Wow, which is crazy because I don't need think to get a I had a goddamn tapeworm. I was, I was like. Pandemic, I- Ian Patrick Shelton. That that fool was <laughs> was like was was like one seventy five probably, and I you're, think you're my usual good. walking around weight is like between one forty and one fifty. And oh my God. and um, yeah, I got went on tour and I just thought that was like my calorie deficit is out of control because I'm finally. It. I'm playing shows again. We're bouncing around. Like yeah. where where were you? Like was it Texas. a foreign tour or Texas. Uh, we were in Texas, yeah. It was God's Hate, um Judiciary. Judiciary and RJC. Yeah. And uh yeah, I was taking a shit and uh there's something that out. <laughs> no way. Wow. So you oh. shit out a tapeworm. I shit out a tapeworm. Oh, so was, your that, show. was that it? Was it over? Um, pretty much every medical person I talked to was like, no, there's still more in there for sure. So eventually after about like four more months, I went to the doctor and, uh, got a pill that like gave it a seizure so that it let go. And then it just got broke down in my body. Have you kept the, maintained the weight off or you fat? Trick? Yeah, I, I haven't gained weight, so I don't know. So the tapeworm was like of one of the greatest things ever. Yeah, it just helped me like really get back into front man shape, you know? Fuck. God, that wasn't get... a tapeworm. <laughs> First, I got to find some adrenochrome. <laughs> then I got to find me a tapeworm. Yeah. The tapeworm Dude. was, uh, I, I I remember feeling like such shame <laughs> and, like <laughs> at first. And then I was like, nah, this is really funny. You guys want to see hilarious. the photo? And then it's I just was going funny. and showing everyone at the show. Like I, I went up to Anthony from God's hate first. And I was like, Hey man, do you want to see something fucking crazy? <laughs> and I showed him the photo of me holding up the tapeworm. How, how big was it? Uh, it was probably close to six inches. Holy fuck. And I think that was only a piece of it. I'll give you a six inch tapeworm or a piece of it at least. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, this all reminds me of like buying, like you said, adrenochrome and blah, blah, blah. TikTok is ruining my life and I can't stop buying shit that really? is advertising to me. What are you buying? I got some fucking, some dude was doing an interview where he was talking about he watched Arnold Schwarzenegger throw a whole egg into like a protein shake, like uh-huh. with the shell because of the calcium. And he started, he went on a deep dive, blah, 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 <sighs> made a tooth powder, toothpaste powder with this eggshell in it. And it's like applying non-fluorided. Um, oh, did Colin freeze? Oh, he no. big froze. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> not frozen. I'm just, <laughs> he's just not breathing. Applying calcium. He's fascinated. Teeth I'm that doesn't have fluoride in it is actually really good for your teeth. Blah blah blah. And I watched this. I went down a rabbit hole, and I'm twenty dollars later. I got some egg powder coming my way. I bought. You're on a, a, you're on a retro, whole different TikTok than me. A retro gaming console that like. I, I later looked up that the company is just like bullshit and definitely scammed me. You bought the Soldier Boy <laughs> cube or whatever? I don't know what it is. The Soldier Boy S5? Uh, a, another tooth cleaner thing that vibrates that doesn't do shit. Hmm. Just all kinds of stuff. So My is- targeted ads are all jackets that look like the jackets that I own but are from brands <laughs> I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. And how many of them are you like, that's a sick jacket? I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah, Dude, there's one where it. it heats itself and you could charge your phone. Have you seen that one? What? I'm not into tech. Let's keep the jackets low tech. Bro. It, no tech in the jackets. It has like coils in it that self heat and you charge it. But then it also has a USB port. If it was a cooling jacket so I could wear it for the duration of the yeah. set, I would fuck with that jacket. We well, need I, some now you're getting that. into Aaron Young territory. 
I got a business proposal for Aaron Young. All right, give him a call. <laughs> That's his shit, man. The next, he does, at the next family barbecue, I'm gonna. He's a yeah, tech guy. The next, I'm gonna start pitching. I can't. I don't. I don't. I genuinely don't think he would be happy with me talking about it on here. So fair I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna stop, I'm gonna stop there. But yes, um, <laughs> it went. I mean, he's probably bummed that crashes, people know he exists. Worm. Yeah, absolutely. He won. I don't. He doesn't know. Though so, you know, he doesn't know that. I'm gonna send him the been, clip. He's ever been a subject on this podcast. <laughs> he's for sure never listened to it. My mom does now, though. Oh, oh no. no! Yeah, she's listening. Pretty, I'm pretty well, hard she's gonna hear all about her conception of Taylor on this episode. Bummer. Shit, my mom does too. Yeah, and I talked about that too. Mm -hmm. well, oh, I'm not editing that out. You could not pay me. <laughs> well, dude, I, I one of our very early episodes, I talked about how there was like a V. My mom's obsessed with the Who. There's a VHS VHS tape of the Who playing Quadrophenia. Billy Idol comes out and does his bellboy part, uh -huh. and she like flashed him. And the next day, because he like fucked up the lyrics during it, because my mom was like front row and mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Oh, the so they re-recorded and had to go to the boobs. <laughs> no, no. My mom texted me the next day and was like, "It was actually uh, during this part at this show." Wow. Like, oh, wow. we got all the mom. We get dude. We got to have them both on. I was gonna. I was gonna say we should have my mom on. Let's do both at the same time. Should we? That'd be actually kind of fun. Huh? That would be. That would be. I mean, no offense to this, to you, mom, by this. It would be a fucking nightmare for me. Dude, moms of the show. Moms just sharing, swapping stories where we're just here like, mom. Oh, my God. Come on, come on, mom, don't. <laughs> okay, that's a really good idea. We should do that. Okay, got yeah, it. Right, yeah, right. So military thing. guns on tour now <laughs> until to infinity, man. You yeah. just signed your we're announce We're announcing dates tomorrow. <laughs> Man, you hey. might as well see him now because yeah, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing shows with Anxious and Pile of Love in California, December 9th at the Roxy. That's Ooh. that's where you got to be. Okay, that's please fun. the Roxy. Yeah, damn. Crazy. Who's headlining that? The Roxy. Really? Yeah. You took your fucking hog out of your pants. You slapped <laughs> it on the table. Here it is. So show up so we don't look like Wrote stupid idiots. Uh, what's, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what's the cap at the Roxy? 500. Okay. It's not, yeah, the cap isn't like insane. It's the but name. It's, it's the, the name. room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got That's, to do it. It's really cool because it'll be like almost exactly a year since we did it with Angel Dust. And so it'll be like kind of interesting. I mean, see, what, see how awesome. it turns out. Yeah. We can go to Prince Street before the game. There's a few people who live in LA. I'll tell you what. So. There's a couple. You'll probably do well. Yeah. A couple few, couple few. How was that? We did how, was your, that echo, so. how was your New York? Yeah, that show was great. New York show. Okay, this is a really uh, important thing to talk about to the audience. Don't <laughs> destroy the band's gear uh, when they start their set. It's like a super happen? important part of the thing. But I feel like when you play like a a lit anywhere from like a 150 cap to a 350 cap, it's like mm -hmm. you run the risk of just getting rummaged by the audience from Absolutely. the start of the set. So oh track one, bass gets broken. The Mic bass? cord gets ripped out to where the light, the the core, the like line is just done. And it was just like, wow, our really big show is turning out to be pretty rough right now. <laughs> Yeah, but the the chaos of it had to have been more of a well. The audience like never slowed down, and that was the that was the the godsend of the whole thing, where it was just like, oh, think if had they been like, can't hear the vocals, you know. Ooh, this like, thing I just did made this set super. <laughs> I'm not yeah. even having fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, can't even hear uh, it. This is bullshit. <laughs> so, so luckily, but luckily, those. What did I, the, what did I the, break this for? Yeah, those yeah. shows. The, those times like that where the show is so crazy that the mic cord gets ripped, the bass gets broken. That's what gets you over now. Definitely, that's what works. I just really love sounding good. <laughs> yeah, that. but that's us. Like, But the audience isn't like – generally, they'll be like, yo, they sounded great. The, but the what's going to work – is like pretty important. That That's my only thing is just okay, like but we had, did it we had eventually bass work? the rest of the set and it was I, just okay. like – 
I, I don't think anyone two... gave a shit at all, no. but no. Uh, no. except for me, you know. But to to an average showgoer, the most important things are the vocals and drums. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, what, or that's like what a moves solo. everything. We even had a song where the our bass player had to leave the stage to go find a new bass. <laughs> that's pretty awkward. <laughs> but, but it was a song with like dynamics where it actually like kind of yeah. works. But like a yeah. video, if somebody's watching a 60 second TikTok or something, because like the, the these little fragments of live music are how how you grow now. Yeah. Something where somebody online goes, this is this is crazy. I have to share it with somebody. Yeah. That's I mean, literally that, that the only way. Like, when we did the surprise, we've like popped up on stage during other band sets twice now. And those two moments like pushed things so far forward for us because people weren't expecting us. And it, it gave a really concentrated like uh, Whoa, reaction this is special, from they the audience. Because be it's like, oh, we're hopping up for doing one song. So it's like, go crazy for the one song. Otherwise, like you get, you know, whatever you get, nothing right. of this. So very true. Hmm. Wise. It's hard to do. Yeah. You know, that's, that's real, like lightning in a bottle kind of shit. Well, yeah, the audience has to actually be interested first and foremost. And then you like have to like let people like redistribute the information. People are interested in this and want to go crazy, but that's, what's so popping about hardcore right now is, mm -hmm. is exactly that. And I think it's what happened like with ceremony and trash talk and even like harm's way. I remember I listened to one episode and you guys were talking about harm's way at rain fest. And it being really scary. And I remember I got Ugh. annihilated right at the top of that Harm's Way at Rainfest set. Really? That's what yeah. we opened with Pantera. We opened with I'm Armstrong trying to paint myself as kind of the Forrest Gump of hardcore. <laughs> you were where like there. you could you could go to all these like classic moments <laughs> and I'll just be like in the background somewhere. I don't think that's the analog you quite want. <laughs> there no, might he's, be. no, he's I'm somewhere between it. I'm going Forrest with Forrest Gump and the and the Kingdom Hearts guy, you know, he was in every movie, but we just didn't know it. You know, you were no, Ian was I'm there. Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, I'm Forrest Gump. True. You ain't whooping no little demons and shit. Yeah, all right, you shit heard happens. Ian Shelton, Forrest Gump. The way yeah, that's perfect. Good, good, good way to just, wrap it. Just let yeah. everyone take that, take what they yeah. will from it. No, what are you having for dinner tonight? Uh, whatever North Carolina has. They some probably got ass, everything. Some good uh, ass I barbecue. might try to go Waffle House because we haven't done Waffle House yet. <sighs> Nothing wrong with that. Lovely. Nothing wrong. But love, you love know a little breakfast funny? for dinner. I was I was kind of like complete. I was just like, yeah, Waffle House is fine. I'll do it. You know? And then this sh doing the show, I'm really, I think about Waffle House a lot. And then Dude. we went together. Yeah. I had a delicious meal. And that was like a chaotic one. Like, I know that's part of why blah, 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 blah. If we went to one where we got like seated immediately, like you normally do. And a full and, menu. And a full menu. Exactly. Like a, the real experience. Dude, I've said this before, but when I ordered the All-Star, I asked for the, the waffle to come 10 minutes later. The All-Star is Denny's. Oh. Oh? What? All American? Oh, no, the Grand shit. Slam. You're right. You're right. Right. All-Star. They're just I'm, two baseball things. Back I'm a rotten... Egg. So when, but I asked for the waffle to come later. Uh huh. I didn't want to do that to Miss Portia. Yeah, yeah. No, she was busy. She was busy. But she normally that's 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 my move. You know? So waffle house for dinner tonight, yeah. Yeah, we drove by by one on the way in. So mm. how many shows do you have left on this spe specific little run? We have like two weeks left. It's like a five week total thing. You didn't even tell me about your new record slash re release thing. Dude, let's talk about it. It's out now. <laughs> I'm sure the label would be pissed if they knew that I did not yeah, they'd be like, mention fuck, this. Man? I and it's and it's you you repressed all the stuff and there's new stuff. So it, it is convoluted in that way because we've been it's working on represses for so long. And then this concept of like the re-release came after the records had been at the press for seven months. And, um, and with that also, we, we, we recorded those songs with Taylor. Like, I mean, some of them, two of them are iPhone recordings actually. And then Taylor mixed them, uh, to, to sound better. Uh, yeah. now do but, you mean like they were like, like an eight track on an iPhone or just in a room record? 
it's uh like i have a specific micing technique for drums and guitars and when i just wow. just the my garage band on my iphone it's crazy uh it's pointed amazing. at that so yeah i can't stand busy people and can't get none are both uh all the instruments come from the iphone come oh, from just amazing. being mic'd from a iphone and then taylor makes those but yeah we we wanted to do it and then get it out for this so we weren't going to have vinyl for this for now anyway mm -hmm. so it's like why not um just release it digitally and keep it moving because if everyone just decides to wait around for vinyl like that's nothing's ever going to happen it's getting better but yeah uh, that was that was a definitely a, a debate with the dead body stuff of like do we because it's well, been done did, for you did wait forever so yeah so long that's yeah. right it's it's been a full year uh i was i was like a i was like 175 pounds in those promo picks crazy how much are you now? 220. Wow. Ish. Really? You weigh 220 pounds? Yeah, brother. Really? Slapping meat. Meat man. Meat man. Man meat. That's crazy. It's for dinner. Well, I'm yeah. feeling good. So yeah. listen to all Rosie to the gun. Okay, the third one. The third installment. The third. That's how I... The, I wanted to call it All Roads to the Gun 3, but it just would have been too confusing because then there's two other All Roads Lead to the Gun before you get to three. So are there it. not, though? <laughs> there, there are, so that's why it's All Roads Lead to the Gun Deluxe. Ah, uh, Deluxe. But deluxe. then it was, it's, and the single, terrific, with an incredible video. Thank you. Did you do that? How much of that video was you? Uh, the ideas were me. Um, but that's our guitar player, Will. He the is the freaking the one that the one you gave the keys to. Yeah, that lost uh, the keys one to. of the, yeah, I gave the keys to, to Will. So, okay. but he earns his keep, you know. He did a good video, so maybe he gets to pass on. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, the chop. I give I give him the least shit. Uh, yeah. So basically, Will and I's relationship and goes all the way back to like when I started doing like the bigger angel dust videos is me like thrusting will into the really difficult parts mm -hmm. while, so I can work <laughs> on the creative elements. And so will has to deal with everything that sucks. So mm -hmm. like literally we had one concept for the, let me be normal video. And I was like, that's kind of difficult. Fuck it. Let's just pull up and do green screen. And then I have like a couple ideas. And then as we're driving to the shoot, I was like, all right, Will, um, do you think that you put my face on a baby and the baby gets picked up and then kicked into space? And he's like, yeah, I could do that. And then I was like, all right, could you have my brother pick me up as a baby and then box me? And then I was like, could you have <laughs> true story or no? These, these are all <laughs> uh, my space? little brother did smash my leg in half once. Wow. But he was a baby and he, he was the baby at the time because he's my younger brother. He's younger. And he jumped out of um, the off the Whoa. bunk bed. And we had one of those like really cheap futon mattress bunk bed ones mm -hmm. where I had the like really large metal grating. My leg just goes and slips between. And then my whole body goes and it snapped my small Classic. bone. And my mom Fun. didn't believe me about that I was in pain. She just thought I was trying to get out of school, which I did a lot. Yeah. Um, walked on it for two weeks. Wow. Holy fuck. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that could I, like permanently alter the course of I, your life. I just got my my real it's probably ID. why I'm short. You guys know <laughs> yeah. about real That's ID? Probably why. Yeah, I got yeah. one. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I had enhanced. to renew my life. I just had to renew my license. So I was just there the other day. And one of the things they ask for for proof of residency is your high school transcripts. It's like an option. For some reason, I had that, I think, from when I got my passport originally back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I just had them laying around. I was looking at my day's absence. And I remember my mom gave me a limit of five days a year that I could just like, what for any reason, I could just stay home. Wow. M mom, she's ahead of the curve. And what was funny was every year it was five days for every single uh, like, i was maxed out <laughs> like, did you, did you i think use my sixth grade year early? i missed like 45 days 45 days i missed you like a almost piece a of whole shit, whole huh? fucking semester oh my god wow were you a little fucker or what no i've always been more scared of like trouble than mm -hmm. like i don't get in trouble but i just would lie to stay home okay mm -hmm. 
She did never insane. really like school. Same. Did you do did, what were your what were your guys' grades like? Dude, I could literally go get my transcripts right now. I don't now. want to see your fucking pathetic. Grade. I was like I a B minus. Okay. Never I did think my never did homework G- once. My neither did I. Neither I never did Same. homework. Same. Ever. Ever. I think my last I think my overall GPA was like two point five. Oh, dude, I was the two point four. So I was yeah. right there with you. That was pretty similar. I did uh now, guys. I did running start for my final year. And what I was, was so it, it was uh it's like where you go to college instead of high school for your final year. Oh. And I really just did it so I could slack off more and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I failed German like every year, and my teacher just let you me speak come back. German Why did you year? have German classes? That's fucking pointless. I agree. But he speaks German. It's come in handy. It's worked. Has it? Is that where you learn German or did you grow up learning? Don't fucking speak German to me right now. Don't do it. The thing. Ich, ich habe nur no. gelernt. I don't want to hear you. I know I only learned in school. Are you going to compliment him? Wow. Compliment Colin in German. Yeah. Du, like du, du bist ein Schweinhund. No, I'm saying like the, the German way. Oh, no. Don't do that. <laughs> I can't handle that. Yeah, right I can now. definitely. I speak I'm not fluent stable. Now. Yeah. Um, I just called you a bastard, by the way. Um, you're obsessed but, with calling me a bastard. My I said compliment him. What kind of sick man are you? My parents were married when I was born, okay? <laughs> I'm a, a bastard. bastard man. Are you? See? So that's offensive. Well, I'm not either. Offensive. I'm, I'm, I'm a true born. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I even know German. my dad, just, so just you're really the, a bad the question. person. I took German because it was offered. The Spanish classes were like huge and were like serious, and the German one just seemed like really chill. And... Uh, it's and my so family's u- from Germany. It's just so just. useless to know in this country, you know? Everybody's. I just don't know if you- I go around saying that your family's from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how'd they get here and when and why? <laughs> yeah, what year like did they arrive? Asylum, perhaps? No, oh, eight? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Be- before before the First World War. So What did they think huh? of, of World War One? What did my family think of World War One? Were they for it or? Uh, They're rocking well, they with left it, because they weren't into the Kaiserreich, so oh. they probably weren't for it. What they think of number three? I'll tell you what they really loved was World War Five, brother. Yeah, <laughs> you know damn what I'm right. Well, when do you my fuck opa with, was all about. World when War do you fuck with World War Five? If you're listening, <laughs> dude, you know that's a true story. That my mom bought a twitching tongue shirt off of eBay, <laughs> and it was Leo. <laughs> that's a true story. She, oh. bought a, she bought a shirt, wears it, has it, and it was Leo. That's awesome. <laughs> That is perfect. Uh, Ian, what, what's the rest of your night like? You know, I'm gonna watch Survivor, some, listen to some Kanye, watch some Kanye. Speaking of World War One, I'm gonna watch that uh, <laughs> Quiet on the Western Front. Remake. Speaking of World War One, yeah. Speaking of World War One, or two, Kanye, Kanye yeah, West. Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably watch Survivor. Sick. What's what season are you on? I'm watching the current one. Oh shit! Jeff Probst went to my uh, my gym for a while. Really? Very nice. Yeah. I'm trying He's to I, shred it. I I I grapple <laughs> constantly with um, whether or not I want to apply. I could get you on, no joke. I I think I would have a good chance of getting on, but then I'm like, well, then I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then you're there. It's the and same then, casting so as Big Brother. My my yeah. thing I really send is one that email. I, I know that I could not um, win. It would ruin my music career. Yeah, it would. So, you know, assuming I could maybe have some good type of social strategy, I would have to like strategically be like, I need to get in fourth place. Ah, mm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Like you'd have to be like, like sacri- and be like a sacrifice kind of guy. Yeah, like, you want like yeah, yeah, like a power goat type situation. Yeah. you know where you're like where playing, they want you back next season, but you say no. And, say, and, nah, and then really, you really go like the, set, the next season and you get voted off early because people are like that person's a threat there. Yeah. They're too that's good. the type of that's survivor the type of all stars. On. But if, make it to all in stars. rock music, if they know that you got a million dollars, you're over. You're out, dude. Wow. But I w- I think in lieu of touring, I feel like uh, a survivor <laughs> play would really get the get the career going, you know? Absolutely. I knew a girl who got like like the offer for real world. Like we were pseudo dating way way fucking back there's and a member of a, of a hardcore band who almost got on um survivor and i 
so mm-hmm. bummed still to this day that he didn't get on. This guy, this guy Hayden, that was on Big Brother the first season I wa- I uh, I worked on, was like, I don't know if he became a tongue's head after he got off or like while he was in there because he like hit me up immediately after the season, and it was bizarre because I'm watching this guy as like his underling, right? And then a week later he's like, "Fucking preacher man, bro, let's go." Isn't it strange having nice. like um a famous fan? Because you're like, it, it feels like this should do something for me, but it and, yeah, just does not. <laughs> it's real, but it's it's really is like music is the thing where like no matter how famous or powerful you are, you listen to music. Yeah. So and Everybody it's like the, if it, especially if it's if you're a, an actor or something who can't play music, music blows your fucking mind. So you just want to be friends with those people like they the people that the world looks up to look up to musicians because it's like the thing they can't do we've i mean chris santos was like instrumental in us getting on metal blade yeah and when fucking maddie matheson wore the harm's way shirt on the yeah that like, rocked that, that was that was like fuck. constantly every day for like a month you're getting tagged like, every day have you seen this so yeah. I, I, it 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 pays Residuals, um you know? reggie I don't, I, I had randomly that. That was crazy randomly was just like here's um he just posted an rjc song on his main pro like on like on his grid he posted just this song absence and then i ran into him no and i was like really random uh hey man like I, you posted my band recently <laughs> and he and he said he found out about us via montana public radio that an author he was listening to was talking about liking us and that's how he found our band you know what's Insane. funny about that though how much shit did i give you for not putting the name on the album art and i still stand by what a, what what is and, but what then he mean? posted he didn't post the name yeah it did it said absence regional justice Center. it did not say the name i remember looking at it i remember thinking imagine if they put the name on this art I didn't give a f- it still would have yielded nothing. It got like 196 <laughs> likes. It's like it fucking it means nothing. It means absolutely yeah. nothing. Except for like, oh, someone who I think is cool thinks I'm cool. Yeah. Like that's that's the only power in like a like famous motherfucker liking your it's shit. It's a good feeling. This man it's- posts a lot. Insane amount. Yeah. I was I was like, holy shit, this kid this got no likes. But I got a lot of like us reposting, I got a lot of people to go comment on it. Yeah, exactly. It really is. It, it is hilarious how little it would take for me to be like, I fuck with this guy. You know, it's just like, if you're like, I like this song you did. I'm like, you're just like, I, I love him forever. I die for this man. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really, hard. It's really it hard having your opinions change so rapidly due to uh, your ego <laughs> being inflated. Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it's, it? It's the easiest way. It's crazy, man. Ego is a hell of a thing. It's so funny how accessible uh, musicians are because we're all so self-conscious. I know. You it's, like I mean, me? it's just the easiest you like art me? to sh- up, it's the easiest art to shit on because it's so subjective, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's too subjective. I've really tried to adopt your mindset, Colin. What's where that? it's like like your movie mindset where it's like yeah. nothing sucks. Like, nothing sucks because everything took a lot of work. Like obviously nothing sucks. Yeah. You know? I've really tried to adapt that. My like, my logic with like things sucking is like maybe I, I'll talk shit privately about something if I find it egregious. But the other strategy I have is I just say I've never heard something if I dislike it. And that way nobody ever has to feel a way about me disliking what they've made. Yeah. So true. it's just like, oh, I mean, what do you think of this band? I'm like, never heard it. Yeah. Like, and that is an interesting That's the Mariah dynamic. Carey method. I don't know. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know her. <laughs> so it is an you. interesting dynamic to just like obviously i don't like all music that's come out yeah but i don't want to be the guy to be like this is terrible yeah. about anything we, i have the phenomenon and it happened with rjc early on where i was like all these guys in like metalcore bands and like deathcore bands love rjc for some reason and i'm like hmm. i do not give a shit about a single band in that genre but i'm so i don't want to publicly like talk shit on something that is like my clearly a part of my fan base same with like military gun and guys in pop punk bands Mm -hmm. like that that is a part of our that's a sector of our of our fan base and it's like i have no intent on being rude to someone who likes my band so i'm not gonna talk shit on pop punk bands and like straight up dude that's 
It's just, it's just saying, pointless. It's pointless. If to you be fuck, if you That's fuck it. with my creative output one percent, I'm taking a bullet for you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying for you. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I feel like um, you also probably have a really that. specific uh, thought process on it, just because of Twitching Tongues being the polarizing <laughs> band that it was yeah. at the time, and like, I like my thing with. I, I I'm more recently a Twitching Tongues fan, but there was when that mother when that movie Mother came out. I still haven't seen it because I just loved how much people were on one side or the other of it's good or it's bad, it's the worst sure. thing ever. And I just loved not having a stake in the conversation. You have not seen it yet. I still have not seen it. It's uh, it's a it's a bottom ten for me probably. Really? Yeah, big time. All time? Oh yeah. And so, but right I right down there with that. Halloween ends, brother. Oh. <laughs> I just watch it for fun. I don't. I don't go. Did you I see Halloween those, Ends? Oh yeah. Wins Holy watched fuck. it by myself in Kelowna, BC. I watched it by myself as well, and it it feels like to me that Kenny Powers co-wrote it and not Danny McBride. <laughs> That's kind of how <laughs> all of them felt. I watched uh, Black Phone and Barbarian recently. Incredible. Barbarian is incredible. I want to talk about really Halloween good. Ends though. I think that. The concept that they went into with the second two is like the psychosis of Haddonfield. And I (laughs) don't think they stuck the landing, but I think they were really original. Like I could not stand how many times I had to hear the sentence evil dies tonight in Halloween kills, but the idea of the mob mentality and them killing the guy took entirely too long to kill the guy. The mob mentality scene is one of the worst things to ever happen. But if you think about it just as a story beat and as an interesting facet to a town that's been haunted by a serial killer who will not go away, it's super interesting. Like story I, I wise, agree. I don't think they stuck the landing on either of the concepts in the in either of the final movies, but were great, great concepts. Because because Michael is still called the shape in the credits, and the whole yeah. gimmick is that evil doesn't die; it takes a new shape. And that's what they were going for with that last one. But they forgot to make it good <laughs> or do anything. Any Every decision that was made, I was sitting, I was on my couch going, Wait, you what? watched it at home? Yes. I peacocked it. Nice. Lame. You know I, was got, I had tickets, but. Watching a first run fun. movie at home is so lame. Yeah. You I'm about to do that tonight. tonight right now. With Halloween ends? With uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, the remake. Oh, okay. Um, do you know how bad it fucked me up growing up that Haddonfield, a made-up place, was in Illinois? Oh, God. Uh, I was okay, so, so Oh, as you, the, you were the biggest pussy in the history I was a huge children. pussy, and I grew up in the suburbs, like right where Haddonfield would be that like looked like home. And it was truly just Pasadena. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just... <laughs> uh, Pasadena. When the Halloween H2O trailer came out, it ruined my life. Why? I was at the perfect age where... In the, the circle... The circle, the circle shot is the scariest thing of all time. And I remember um, I always wanted to sleep on my parents' floor because I was just so scared of being in my room. And my stepdad at one point literally made me, he opened the front door and said, you're sleeping in the living room. And that was the scariest night of my life. Dude, H2O is so good. Wait, a Siri kicked up for me. So I just, I don't know if I disappeared. No, no, you're, you're here. here. You're good. Oh, just, okay. I just got really scared for a second. Yeah, yeah, that was scary. That was scary. <laughs> Something haunted yeah. happened. Dude, uh, I was a huge scaredy cat, and uh, yeah, that, that fucked with me. Out. I would sleep on my mom's floor a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, it was. It, that was that was a spot I preferred, and my stepdad did not like that at all. Uh, How wait. good is it Halloween H2O, though? I it's haven't incredible. seen it since it came out. Joseph Gordon-Levitt gets murked in the very beginning. It's so right? awesome. Does he really? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he gets killed with an ice skate, like right off top. Sound Dude, like one it. of my favorite um, beginnings to any movie is legitimately the beginning of Halloween 2. The fact that it picks up oh, and yeah. immediately after Halloween the first oh, one. Amazing. Halloween and 2 was actually the first one I saw. Wait for the beginning of Halloween Ends. Let me know what you think, Bo. Dude, the fact that, that some innocent kid gets run over and then burned alive in the beginning of Halloween 2 is so fucking insane. That's awesome. It's so uh, crazy. What were you okay, going to say? One more Halloween thing. Just I, I've been sharing... Um, I had a paranormal experience for the first time in my life, really. Oh, Let's go! perfect. perfect. 
so we we got this new we got this new apartment um and i'm not like keen to believe in haunted shit necessarily i'm i'm definitely like, scared and i like don't try to look down a hallway if it's dark or anything like that but uh like probably a couple weeks into living there i went up and peed and and was walking back and as i was approaching the bed i thought my girlfriend was walking by me uh and and i got into bed and then like moved my hand i was like oh shit she's in bed and they were straight up someone that walked by me in my bedroom you're you're that is exactly what happened to me and yet we have a Shut common the fuck up, bro. for all of these stories ah! <laughs> Bo's going to say you were tired and it didn't count is that it that, i mean that that's what it. he thinks it's the same thing with Colin's story i wasn't even tired i was just want to lay down and watch <laughs> just rest okay? my eyes just, just, uh, dude he, i mean like the thing if is, it's the it's same like, story, that makes me believe that it was bullshit, honestly. So no, no, but there was I. But I, I wasn't even that. Wait, tired. Is, did he tell it on this podcast? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What episode? I saw I, I've a only female to figure. This episode. I don't know. I don't know where and why. Okay, thanks for supporting the podcast, Ian. I don't Who know where it? where I initially told it, but it's I saw a, a figure of a young woman. I really so, like the paranormal talk on oh, the Justice episode. It actually could have been on the Justice episode because you guys talked a lot about paranormal. Oh, shit, it was actually. no, it was. It was. was it? I think it was the. It was either Justice or Emma. I can't remember. Well, I've listened to the Justice episode for sure, but it. I would have had this experience before, and I didn't say anything to my girlfriend because I didn't want her to be scared. So, have you, okay, okay, now here's the brand question. Brand new apartment. Wait, wait. Here's the question: Have you said anything to her since? About I haven't talked to her in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> But what uh, I'm saying is that's a good control is if she out of nowhere. She is had like, a hey. really bad sleep paralysis and that was independent of my thing. Mm. And, and each of us have like thought the cat was somewhere that it wasn't. And then the cat was right next to us multiple times. Mm. That, so that's like the extent of the, of the haunting. You keep us posted. I feel not threatened. I don't feel threatened at all. I don't feel any negative energy. So I'm no, like kind of. So that's I'm the thing of, is like kind of rocking with it. I could go yeah. to a spooky place. I could go to a haunted house, and I'm still gonna go ah when somebody jumps at me because that's just I wear like a natural plugs. thing. Oh, that's a good that's a good call. But like I'm not I don't, scared. You wear earplugs. <laughs> Cheat code. If you're just listening to like Robert Palmer walking through fucking a haunted house. No, I'm saying I wear straight up just. Oh, earplugs. earplugs. Yeah, I'm just See, thinking about putting on half the track. battle is the the sounds. The and you're like, I don't want the sounds. I just want the visual aspect. Yeah, of being haunted. <laughs> well, that was like when we did. I did horror nights, uh, and then like at a certain point, your nerves are so fried, and you're like, I'm just gonna put in these these little, and I'm just gonna admire the the design here. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna look around and and appreciate all the attention to detail that they didn't Such have. Such an interesting thing. That's one thing I'm real jealous about you guys. I mean, there's lots of things to be jealous about, about living in Southern California or in California in general. But one thing that I'm truly jealous about is Halloween Horror Nights. It's That shit is so cool. I, I so count cool. down the minutes. I didn't get to go this year. It sucks. I don't think Taylor went either. Which is Yeah, Taylor didn't go either. This is the first year in... Uh, so this is my 16th year going. This is the first year in 13 that I did not go with Taylor. Wow. Because just it, nobody made a peep and I had to make it. I had to make a, a fucking. I tried to go really early. And I think part of the conversation was that you would not be willing to go early. And then we never brought it up ever again. Absolutely. Here's the thing. And I don't like going late. Everybody just always does it. Right. But like to me. When when I go there, uh, that kind of kickstarts the season for me. Like, uh, I'm like, all we right. We talk about how man. bad last year was. I went in Florida because we were in Florida on Halloween weekend, and it sucked so bad because of the COVID stuff. Oh, I don't think any year has ever been bad. The plexi, say, plexiglass and then like characters who did not have masks were all wearing masks. And I was in Florida. Oh, and the I was masks like, were pretty gnarly. Yeah, it was so lame. But yeah, I, I was, was going to say, time. I've only been in Florida. And part of what's so rocking about it is you can still go to fucking Diagon Alley and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it's yeah. all still open. You could do that th that this year here. And there were like Death Eaters walking around. It was bad. But isn't it isn't it only Hogwarts? Huh? Do you guys have Diagon Alley at the Universal in Hollywood? I, I think I think the Florida one is just much bigger. But 
I'm going to find out. My mother is coming to Southern California for Thanksgiving, and she wants to go to Disney and Universal. Huge. So I'll, I'll report show. back on that. All right. Sounds good. You report back. You keep us posted on the ghost, and Bo yeah. and I will continue to do our own research on this. I think you could do some research at my apartment. We could do, and you should do a haunt lore in my apartment, get to the bottom of this. Yeah. That's all Easy. we want to do. That's all we want to do. That's literally the goal. This is going to be over soon. We're yeah. just gonna be <laughs> I will, I will, uh, I will help achieve a haunt lore series on television. Okay. If ever you need, I, I've wanted nothing more than to turn off the lights and say, what's that for a long time. So it's, <laughs> as, I felt like that the real me came out that day. Yeah. That was since. a lot of fun. And we're how did you get a, me. what's that counter? Is it how many times did you guys, did say? you not watch it? I didn't watch it. Oh, Dude, that's counter. our best. That's what our best. Hell? This one. guy hates us. I think our I think our I'm best so outputs, busy. Stop writing your fucking two riffs today and watch our incredible. Our special. best two outputs are the the actual haunt lore, like us there, and then the. Well, I started it, happen. and then we I still got busy. don't know what happened with the knock. No, we idea. still don't know. Yeah, unsolved mystery. Day. Which, okay. by the way, was there a scarier soundtrack to anything than unsolved mysteries? That's a good. Do one. you remember the 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 theme song for that theme? Yeah, it's good shit. Scared the fuck out of me as a kid. What do you? What are your final thoughts here, Ian? What do you, Ian? What do you want to? What do you want to leave? Well, I feel lame that my story is the same as your story. I just I now I regret Why? telling my paranormal no, story. Ian, Ian, don't feel lame. That's called confirmation, brother. Is no. it that we both? No. That's not, additional evidence. No. To, he's a fucking idiot. We don't live in the same house. How is it additional evidence? Because it's the same thing happening in two different places. That's irrefutable proof. <laughs> that sometimes someone just walks by you as you're getting into bed yes and they're really close and you go what's that and you go oh there shouldn't your your brain doesn't register it correctly because it shouldn't be there because your brain is also about to be Shut in a place where up, <laughs> Bo. i'll say Flying that I, I i don't ever feel like i'm so, just so tired when i go pee usually no, i'm i'm going pee because i can't go back to sleep because i have to pee Exactly. Fair, fair enough. But I'm just saying, there's all. It's always part of the story. They know that though. Wait, they're but fucking with me. Is a part of the story as no, well. No, no, the, Why the, are the, we like, not going, factoring that in here? Going to bed, being Jeez. anything to do with bed. Well, it's all, also, it's never, no, you know, are, we not, are we all awake at 3 a.m. the haunting Thank hour? You. It's Thank never, you. it's never, I was on my way to the grocery store at one o'clock and on Why the sidewalk would it be? all of a sudden. They sleep during the day. They're up at night. They're nocturnal. I, I always forget. You're right. We're being a fucking loser. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll stop so, being a loser. I kind of wish I didn't say that that story now. And Why? No, 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 uh, no. I, to no, me, no, I'm no, just Bo, like, you're right. You're right. We're up. stupid. Oh, um, has never been <laughs> right in his life. <laughs> Uh, he's never been wrong. Is what I all I've heard. He's never lied, him. but he's wrong. Never lied. Oh, he's yeah, never boy, lied. I he doesn't wrong. believe that he's lying, but he's speaking in bullshit. Uh, <laughs> so we got that. Um, yeah. I'm excited cool, to be man. home someday. Home's yeah. really cool. Home's it's best. really nice. I'm really you go learning to, to, to like home. You go to Apollonia's yet? Near your home? The fuck is that? Oh, that's the pizza, the pizza spot. place. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't done it yet, but I think Audrey has. I'll, I'll text you. I think Audrey went there with Taylor. I think Taylor and Kyla came over. They tried to, and I guess they couldn't. Oh, there's like a crazy line or something like that. There always is. I told them to order ahead. Quit being. More we like. had we had Taylor and Kyla <laughs> over for dinner, and and we and Audrey picked the spot, and she picked a Korean barbecue spot, and then we sat down, and it was the most expensive meal I've ever had, and they, nice. we none of us bailed. We committed. That's nice. how you do it. It was amazing. I mean, life is way too short to not just ball on some food. money. And not just is burn around money. to buy things. That's what I'm saying. I mean, when also, me undies and Manscape are funding your life, what what's Korean barbecue? Please, I can only imagine. Also, only but speaking me. of, I, I mean, this is not sponsored in any way. Just so you guys know, that's true. These, not 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 actually sponsored. I I, I happened to come across some of these Manscape underwear. <laughs> oh my god! Wait. You can't talk about the Manscaped underwear because you need the MeUndies plug as well. 
I you're mean, fucking the money up right now. I'm not fucking. They don't part pay, when they start paying me, they can get it. But I just now they're, now they're going to listen to this and know that you've plugged the manscape underwear and they're not going to give you shit. But if the if the manscape underwear is so dope, who, who cares? It's good stuff, man. I mean, well, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. They don't get nothing else for free. <laughs> manscape. Anyway, manscape. Holler um, at me. I'm starting a podcast at some point in my life. Don't. It's don't. Gonna, it's going to be me. huge numbers. Don't do it. <laughs> do not. It is going to be massive. It's going to be is... the new Kanye West, Joe Rogan of podcasts. So wow. holler at okay. boy. So racist <laughs> and racist <laughs> and a little dumb. You're going to have to listen to find out. This is all part of my marketing scheme. <laughs> okay, this is it? Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, we'll come on back. We'll talk about. I want to know more about the apartment. We'll come and we'll do do the, the do we'll the do the haunt lore at the. Apartment we'll bring an there. EMF. We'll bring a spirit box. We'll bring the band spirit box, and yep. we'll get it. We'll we'll get we'll get down to brass tacks here. Ian, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, you have a great night, Bo. You have a fucking rotten night. Okay. Yeah, I hope you have a, a ghoulish evening. Thanks yeah. for making me feel stupid, Bo. Come on, man. Classic, Bo. You, you got to know. Talking down to me, calling me the Forrest Gump of hardcore and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. good. This is going to be a good thumbnail. All right. Have a happy Halloween, guys. I love you so much. Bye. Uh, bye.